session, and I'm again, I'm, I'm the sole uh, public commentator. The uh, Georgia Supreme Court has, over the last few decades, had uh, so many lawsuits by constitutional officers in regard to abuse of the budget process by county commissions that uh, they, in, in fact, enunciated a legal doctrine of an inherent right. That is, if you were mandated under the Georgia Constitution with certain duties and responsibilities, it only makes sense that you have adequate resources to discharge them. Now, the uh, <coughs> doctrine of inherent right, some legislators might object to as legislating from the bench, and to an extent it is, but the General Assembly had instituted a form of governance which injected an essential conflict between commissions, and other elected officials. And since they chose for their own purposes to legislate that way, yes, we're going to legislate from the bench and make sense of it so that government can function at the county level. Now, uh, the county commission does control the purse strings. However, they control the purse strings only for proper purposes, not to attempt to manage the affairs of other elected officials. When that happens, and it has happened several times, many times over the last decades, some constitutional officers or other elected officials have felt it necessary to file suit to get the resources they need. And while the county commission has a fiduciary responsibility for public funds, that responsibility transfers to the recipient departments when they get the money. So financial, the county commission has no monopoly on fiduciary responsibility. And both District commissioners, the chairman, and all elected officials are subject to being voted out of office if they fail to perform adequately. So they, there's not a monopoly on that either, and the uh, commission does not need to supervise other elected officials who are subject to that same discipline. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tomaski. Okay, next we have a presentation. We have a presentation uh, by our manager of planning and zoning, Ron Roberts, a presentation and hearing of the Joint City of Douglasville and Douglas County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Good to be here today. It's been a long day coming. We started this process back in March with the steering committees, which were appointed from the, the, both the city and the county. So this was the first joint comprehensive plan that has been done with the, the city and the county in my understanding 30 years. So it's been a very long process. <coughs> um, have Allison Duncan here today from, from Atlanta Regional Commission. I wanted to thank her and Sidney Dows, who could not be here today. He was the project manager on, on helping us to pull the plan together. And we have a, a very brief presentation that we would like to go through with y'all. Um, and uh, thank you for your attention. Can we run the... Oh, we can... I can just do this part. Okay. There you go. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present to you. Uh, as Ron said, I have just five brief slides um, that we're going to share with you, mostly going to outline the process and some high-level content of the document, then turn it over to you all for any questions that you may have specifically about the content. I will talk about this um, as long or not long um, as you desire to hear this morning. Um, what you see before you is the outline of the basic elements of a comprehensive plan. Um, there was a rule change, you may recall, about five or six years ago. Your last plan, which we have up there in the corner, came in under um, those new rules. And so this is actually kind of the second go around um, for Douglas County under the, the new statewide planning rules. Um, with that being said, there's three key components that are required for all communities. Uh, community goals, uh, sort of issues and opportunities, and then a community work program. And then there's um, some elements that are required for some based on certain triggers. So because you have zoning, we included a land use element. Because you're part of a metropolitan planning organization, we included a transportation element. Um, again, I'd be more than happy to get into the weeds of any of those, you know, kind of triggers for each element, um, if anybody's particularly interested. But what we're here to share with you today is what we think is a document that substantially brings together all the pieces. Um, we're also here to sort of open the review process um, which means that even though we think we have the pieces together, we're very open uh, to the idea that we don't have all the facts exactly right. We don't have all of the details exactly how you would like them. Um, so again, in opening the review process, um, what we're saying is that we're going to transmit this to the state so that the state can begin their review. We're going to open it up for the community, for the citizens to kind of review and share feedback with us um, about the content, uh, open it up to the commissioners, to the staff, to anybody who wants to take a look at it and still give us feedback. I don't want you to think in any way that this is done. Um, this is really just us saying that we feel like we brought the pieces together and we now we would like to open it up to kind of hear some thoughts about ways that we can refine it to get it to be the document that you would like um, to have when we bring it back to you for adoption. Um, so just some high level findings. We heard a lot of the same uh -huh. things in terms of um, the, the assets that you still have and the things that you might like to see changed. We heard that a lot of that was still the same um, is what we saw back in 2013 when we worked with you guys on that plan update. Um, so green space preservation was still something that we heard for both the city and the county very clearly um, from the citizens. So looking for opportunities to preserve parks and recreation areas. Uh, one of the key things that we kind of zoomed in on was the area around Arbor Place Mall. Now we know that that's in um, the city of Douglasville. You know, but one of the things that we looked at is that for all of the different plans and overlays that had been done in both the city and the county, that was an area that maybe hadn't been looked at as closely. So I think one of the recommendations that we're going to, you know, suggest coming out of this process for both the city and the county is that we kind of take a close look at what's going on um, in that area around Arbor Place Mall, not only as it impacts the land use specifically in the city, but also that transportation connection out into the county. We had a lot of dialogue and discussion with not only the steering committee, um, but also the citizens about sort of, you know, what's going on in that area. Um, and then finally, we heard that governmental coordination has improved tremendously over the last five years, so we had a lot of positive feedback about that. Um, when we put some maps out on the tables and we asked people to kind of, you know, tell us what was going on, you know, from that 30,000 foot level, again, we heard green space. Um, that seems to be a real priority here in the community. Traffic um, was another thing. Not traffic overall, but there are some very pronounced bottlenecks. Um, as we've looked at some of your transportation work programs and some of the small area studies that you already have going on, it seems like you're largely aware of where a lot of those are. Um, so we've used this plan document to just kind of underscore a lot of the good work that you've already done in that regard. Um, but green space and traffic. Um, and then the last thing that I would kind of highlight, 
you know, is a lot of the area sort of around Douglasville and Highway 78, kind of that northern part of the county, um, sort of above 20 and the 78 corridor. We picked up on some interesting potential for land use changes in here. You guys had already had some of that on your future land use map. So we just maybe underscored some land use recommendations that could happen in that area. Um, and then over in this area here, Thornton Road, we understand that the Development Authority is already looking um, to potentially uh, do a study for sort of the proper mix of commercial uses in that area. So just kind of underscored some of the conversations already going on there. You know, but then this overlay, um, there's a lot of conversations about kind of what's going on in that area, you know, 78 as you kind of come into to Douglasville. Um, so we think that's maybe, you, even, you have an overlay in place there, but we think that's maybe an area, you know, that, that we had a lot of folks um, that had some questions that would like to know a little bit more about what could happen, you know, in the future of that area. Um, other than that, a lot of the recommendations that we made, um, and this is not the, the land use plan, I can pull that up if we want to talk about it, um, but a lot of the other recommendations that, that we made mostly fell in line with um, supporting the small area studies that you already have in place. So the Sweetwater Master Plan, you know, some of the LCI studies and other things that you have going on, largely preserving this area um, of the county, you know, much as it is today. Um, is that, okay. Um, so this in, is the, the process, um, you know, in terms of where we are now. Uh, so the next step is going to be the transmittal to DCA and the regional review. Again, that's just saying we've substantially put the pieces together, but now we want the community um, and the state to come together and give us the feedback about what needs to be, you know, kind of changed, tweaked, modified. Um, we'll make those final revisions, and we're working towards an overall final adoption date of October 31st. Um, that's the deadline set by the state. Um, that was the formal presentation that I had prepared. Um, I believe you have copies of the plan document, and I can go into a little bit more detail about specific sections if you'd like to hear it, but I thought at this point what I would do is just open it up for any specific questions or comments that you may have about any elements of this plan, rather than assuming that, that I know what may be interesting to you guys to talk about. So. Okay, thank you so much for questions from the board. Uh, Commissioner Moore here. Thank you, Allison. Uh, the previous slide with the map on it, uh, mm -hmm. If you could go back to that, uh, and not having a legend of what that is. Uh, I mean, I recognize some of the green areas, but uh, overall, what what are the in green? Uh, what are the green areas? You know, maybe we should go to the land use map if we want yeah, to talk about land it. use. Yeah. Th this was a map we used at one of the meetings where we asked people to just kind of put a dot on where they were coming from. One of the things that we saw improve throughout the plan was the public participation. You know, so throughout the plan process, we saw kind of the interest building, and we saw more folks. You know, coming. Um, to the, to the meetings and the kind of the final public engagement, we had really good turnout for that. So one of the things that we try to do is ask people to sort of place a dot on their home or business so we see where we're coming from. The key takeaway from that map is that we had really good coverage from okay. you know all areas of the county. In terms of the land use, this is what um, generally we're going with right now for the land use plan. There may be some kind of tweaks and <coughs> modifications that get made before it finally comes back to you um, for final adoption. Um, you know, but as I had mentioned, the, the, the change that we made to reflect the recommendations of the Sweetwater sure. Master Plan, this was an area that you had already kind of identified in your last plan update as having some potential for some different land use, you know, than what we have today, this kind of area above I-20 between Douglasville and Villa Rica. We heard that again through this plan process, um, but think if you are going to kind of move towards changing that land use probably wise to sort of pay attention to the environmental conditions in the area, look at ways that you can kind of buffer, you know, and look at some other um, land use controls as this may potentially develop into something different to make sure that we're preserving water quality and all of those other environmental considerations that we know are very important <coughs> to the community. Um, and then this was the other kind of big area that we have a lot of public, you know, comment and engagement, um, you know, around, and we've made some recommendations, you know, in regard um, to that area. Um, as uh, well. And the second question, I guess, to, to uh, uh, do we have a copy of the draft? Yes, sir. Uh, the the most recent draft was uh, we got uh, the 24th, and it's in your, should be in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. I yield back. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Mulkey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, real quick, just to, to, to piggyback on uh, Commissioner Mulkey, uh, green space and so forth. In the in the recommendation or in the draft. Um, was there any specifics around green trails? Uh, you know, 
blue trails, anything like that? Do we get, do we, do we touch any of that at all? As a frame, did you get input from the public regarding that at all? So probably not in tremendous detail. I think the one that comes to mind is the, the trail development that I think is underway mm -hmm. with the Sweetwater, the oh, extension Sweetwater. of the Sweetwater <coughs> um, Creek Trail. Mm -hmm. That's not the name of it. It's the one that, that I know starts in Boundary, Boundary Waters Water. um, that yeah. connects to Sweetwater Creek State Park, and I'm probably <coughs> not thinking of the, the correct right. name of it. So I know no, that project right. specifically. But in terms <laughs> of any kind of expansion of the, the larger trail network, we're more than happy to, to put some more language in about that. We do talk about the potential along 166 for maybe picking up the work for the corridor management plan. Um, in one, 166, as you know, is a state route. Looks like a state route. It's the areas off of 166 that I think y'all know are truly amazing. You know, the areas immediately adjacent to the road and when you get back into the community. Tremendous potential to join up some of those areas, you know, by a trail network. Um, so it'd be a good opportunity in a corridor management plan or some other similar document to start to address those considerations. So certainly potential for that. I don't know if you have a, another plan that gets into a lot of the, you know, what, what a broader network could look like. Yeah, let me, let me, let me weigh in on that. There's, there was some, well, I don't know, it was three or four years ago, we had a conversation of extending the trail system from Fox Hall all the way down to Boundary Waters, all the way down to Sweetwater. I mean, that, it was a conversation that was had, and Commissioner Mulcair, mm -hmm. you can weigh in to help clarify that. But it's something I don't want to forget because something we did talk about publicly, and so okay. it needs to be noted of record. So I want to make sure at least acknowledge that there was conversation regarding okay. that. Uh, we know it's 24 miles, it's long enough to be a, a marathon in essence, but we want to acknowledge That'd be awesome. Right. We can certainly look for that. Does it, do you notice it happen to go along with the, that larger plan that the PATH Foundation did for the Chattahoochee Hill Country yeah. back yeah. in the day? Yeah. Is that? Because we can certainly pull in that document and make yes. reference. Yeah, yeah uh, Claire, it, it is, that is the, uh, the structural basis for that uh, okay. concept. And uh, of course, something is happening happening down in that corridor, i.e., uh, Foxhall development. Okay. And our discussions with the uh, with the present owners that they would be amenable uh, to accommodating the trail, just just not directly along the waterfront. So there's been some discussion about county right of way, utility right of way, and that sort of thing okay. to make that trail make that trail connection. But it is part and parcel of. But, uh, okay. Uh, well, we'll take Jerry a look at Robinson. Mm -hmm. Had to talk about. It. Sure. We will take a look at how we address trails and greenways overall, and but the potential blue way trails, you know, to your point, we can take a look at how we address all yeah. of that overall. And that, uh, I guess, uh, you know, Ms. Gillespie, the National Park Service, mm -hmm. uh, we've had discussions with her about the blue trail connectivity. Okay. Okay. <coughs> That's great. We'll make sure that we're addressing all of that and looking at where we can, you know, make sure that we have it in the work program as a follow-up item. Commissioner Geiger? Yes, I, in the city of Villa Rica, who's mm -hmm. uh, uh, proposing a trail. Okay. Is it Gold Nugget? It's Gold Nugget. Gold yes. Nugget Trail. Yeah. And it's going to come across Tyson Bridge, is what they were talking about the other day. Okay. Okay, we'll make sure that Tyson we have the information Bridge. on that. Mm -hmm. Great, great. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. That might could connect to uh, that. Mm-hmm. It's close. Mm -hmm. It's not far. Okay. That well, Question. No, I'm sorry, but, but to continue the conversation, um, to, to Madam Guider's and Commissioner Mulcair's point, um, connecting the control system within our county, there was conversation, and kind of Mr. you may want to weigh in, um, how we connect over to Cobb County. Um, I mean, all this should be part of this master plan five to ten years, I mean, whatever the time span. But these are conversations that we've had had, and so okay. I just want to get them up record since we're officially making that record, <coughs> and that is just not a conversation that we've had during work session, an offline conversation. Um, can you, um, Ron, were you involved, or Mark, can you talk about that connectivity? Or if, if even Miguel is here, we've had that conversation recently about connecting the Cobb counties and how we would align that. I haven't had specific conversations <coughs> in the seven months that I've been here on it, but I was aware of it. I talked with the uh, DC DOT staff, uh, Brandy and I had talked about it before she left, um, but uh, we'll make sure that we pull mm -hmm. that and, 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 and include the, those components into the plan. Mm -hmm. And going forward also, since you do have the packet commission, um, if y'all have questions or any other things like this that we want to add to it, <coughs> if you could send them to me and I'll get them in and, and get them incorporated into the document. Because what will happen is, you know, we'll come back in October and you will have, you'll need to approve formally the document. Mr. Just one other thing. Um, 
corridor of, uh, uh, going up 78, connecting Villarica and Douglasville. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that and commercial potential. Y yes, ma'am. And I think WSA is on uh, record as they would support something like that. That's correct. And then let me add to the, they're in the middle of an 18 month study to see where their potential expansion for their sewage. Uh -huh. will be and they were heavily involved in the steering committees uh -huh. uh, Gil and Brian attended every one of them and so yeah that, that's being considered as they look at where they think that they need to expand water sewage infrastructure and it'll be based largely on, on what we have that in our plan. It's already commercial mm -hmm. there's, because of the lack of sewage it, it puts a mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on expansion. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Some of the recommendations um, that I referred to about protecting the environmental quality and looking at the buffers are coming specifically from WSA <coughs> in that area. So to Ron's point, they've but been you, very active in the process. You made a point a while ago about we need to look at uh, you know, protecting the area too, and mm -hmm. there's an area out there that would be a great park. Okay. <laughs> uh, and maybe we can talk about that at right. another time. Okay. But, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the chairman knows what I'm talking about. So. <coughs> um, but uh, there's a, a a lot of the residents out there are wanting it to be um, mm -hmm. purchased as a park. So mm -hmm. if, if it makes sense to put it as a uh, maybe potential green space on the land use map, I think looking at that change, this would be a great time to get that you know to us so you have that on your land use map as you're kind of making some of those future decisions okay. would be you know great opportunity. So. Um, again, just to kind of reiterate, we will, I think if you're meeting, what we're looking for is sort of a letter to transmit this to, right. to regional review by DCA. Um, that is just a letter signed by your chief elected official um, that, that formally opens this for that regional review so that all of these various, you know, things that we would like to see added, filter that up through Ron, you know, and Ron sends that up to us, you know, whether it's the elected officials, the community as a whole, you know, we want to get all of these, you know, final kind of tweaks, changes, comments, refinements, you know, into the documents. It's very much still making these changes. This is great feedback. Okay. You have any questions? Commissioner Mitchell, you have any questions? Are you, are you there, back? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just, just a couple of questions. So mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that the, the uh, 78, Highway 78, and that current um, commercial outlay <coughs> that we've got there. Help me understand kind of, you talk about that upper portion there, um, on 70 and District 1. Okay. So this, yeah. which end of yes, the that end. This end yeah, of 70, yes. okay. This, this district right yeah. here. So, so kind of what was, what was the kind of response, kind of what, what was the makeup, because that's, that's an existing business, mm -hmm. uh, businesses that sure, are sure. down on that corridor. Right. And, and what kind of response and what kind of the ideals that's coming in that direction. And I've got a follow-up question after Okay. That. So I think one of the conversations that we had sort of the steering committee and then followed up at the public meeting, <coughs> level, well, there, there seems to not be an awareness that there was already kind of a current overlay zoning. Right. right. There, was, there was an overlay zoning classification, you know, right. on that corridor. Mm -hmm. um, some folks had maybe suggested that was a corridor appropriate for a small area plan or something like that. Mm -hmm. When we looked at it and we saw that there was an overlay in place, I don't know much about the history of that overlay. We did write a section into the plan discussing all of the various mm -hmm. um, overlays. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, can maybe consider is it is how old is that overlay? Is it having the desired effect that you want it to have? Um, is it something that maybe some sort of small area plan would help to to move along the, the kinds of changes because I think there was a, a sense that what we had heard from the community is that they largely just felt that there wasn't much happening there and so it does seem like at some point in the past there was some very deliberate attempt made to get a type of development there that the county wanted to see. Um, so one of the things that we had you know kind of recommended um, is to make sure that all of your overlays are working the way that you want them to work um, and, and that could be a you know potential follow-up yeah, one of the items coming out of this. Yes. One other question, though, how we nice bypass. What kind of communications <coughs> are you having along with the city mm -hmm. to kind of how the overlay or that, that makeup will look even if you're trying to uh, <coughs> encompass and involve the city <coughs> of this, deal, mm -hmm. this whole uh, infrastructure that's kind of going in as we speak now? Sure. We've, uh, you know, we worked with the city to have the quality growth overlay. So, I mean, that was so jointly adopted. Mm -hmm. Overlay and and they're in the process of updating their UDO right now and we've talked about 
how that really is important as you pass from city to county that you have the, the continuity of, yes. for a variety of things, landscaping and, and signage and, and, and those components as well. Um, but I think in, in that specific corridor, uh, you just, I think it's a matter of economics. It's only a matter of time before you really start seeing things turn around in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it does, and, and businesses that come in will conform to, a, to the overlay that's existing. I think you'll see a better look and feel as a key entryway into Douglas County. Got it, got it. And last but not least, green space. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about green space, and I know green space can go from parks and rec to a, a variety of trails mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Give me that, that concept once again so I can make sure I kind of get what, what that long process is or what that really is. Right. Well, I would even take it one step further to say when we were talking with the community through the process, green space even extended to like areas of the county they just want folks to to leave alone right yes. they don't necessarily want an improved activated kind of yes. green space vision for that mm -hmm. right i think that folks and what i've heard is that people feel basically kind of a satisfied with some of the green space options i always hesitate to, mm -hmm. to to kind of always say that right but we didn't necessarily hear in the county a little bit more in the city but in the county we didn't necessarily hear that we want you to go out and acquire this big park right you have some great park amenities particularly with boundary waters um the park that's over near the the library is that dog river park is that the yeah. correct, correct name on it um you know that the a lot of recreational amenities that you sort of already have um the the trail connectivity piece we can certainly look into that and see you know if we need to do a little bit more language around what sort of a larger trail you know vision could look like for the county um, but I think a lot of what we heard about green space is areas that are largely green, that are largely undeveloped, maybe looking at some more formal conservation mechanisms to kind of keep them that way. Mm -hmm. um, because right now with the, most of the zoning in the county, I believe is a one acre zoning classification. So a lot of the large tracks that you have, particularly in this area, you know, they're just kind of large because that's how people decide to use them, right? Um, but the idea that, you know, subdivisions or things like that, you know, could come in um, the strongest thing that you have kind of keeping the area looking this way is the a lot of the protections for the water quality. You know, we heard the water quality conversation a little bit more up here, but I think some of what we have written into the work program is the recommendation that we still maybe need to look at some better conservation mechanisms just for the sake of conservation, just for the sake of giving folks the option who still want to live in sort of a more rural feeling area, even if you're 20 miles, you know, from the airport. Um, you know, so, you know, I wouldn't say that there's a, more so in the city, we had more of the conversations about actively improving, you know, park spaces. In the county, the green space conversation tended more towards how do we kind of keep these large, you know, expanses of open conservation <coughs> land, you know, viable through the plan horizon. Anything yeah. you want to add to that? Is that? No, I thought we, we hit all the high points for right now. Um, and like I said, I make myself available for other comments. Anything that, that you guys want to add? We've got 60 days, you know, yeah. it's going to be sent over to John. I guess John West is probably going to. Be reviewing it. His staff. His staff, yeah, his staff, somebody over there at DCA. So we have some, some opportunity to get that together and, and uh, look at some other connectivity. Gary just reminded me some, to, to go back and look at some of the trail stuff yeah. as well. I yield back. Okay. Any Thank you. Other Thank you. Uh, Commissioner yeah. Robinson. Yeah, just real quick to a point of clarity. Um, I understood your process. You had community engagement, um, mm -hmm. uh, various degrees, ebb and flow, pins on you, know, but you got input that was sufficient. I did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I, I know I purposely stayed off um, as an elected official to allow my district, because I think we put district representation, allow everybody to weigh in. But, but something the Commission Volker has always established is that each of our commission districts are, have different character areas. Mm -hmm. And while the citizen weighs in, but broadly what we want, very different areas. Um, district 4 may want to stay rural, but I'm already urbanized, right? Sure, sure. I've got a, Absolutely. We, we got a balancing act for that. So my, my point in just saying that is that I think for my peers, we, we have to make sure we weigh in not saying that we hadn't but weigh in to at least shape what we heard and i guess if you got 60 days what is the date that we need to have feedback to you so it's not like okay we didn't know you need to tell mm -hmm. us what day do you need to have feedback from us october 1st maybe. that should be october 1st would be i think the, the best opportunity to because i need to get on the work session for approval by the 31st of october because that's our deadline mm -hmm. okay Sounds good. so between now and october 1st mm -hmm. okay Madam Clerk, can you All put right. that on our <coughs> make it official? Yes, thank okay, thank you so much. Commissioner Guider. <laughs> Just one clarification. District 4 mm -hmm. has both rural and uh, uh, urban mm -hmm. uh, because we, we've got the city of Douglasville. The mall mm -hmm. is in my district. Mm -hmm. uh, Villarica is in my district. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got that, but the southern end of the count, uh, area does want to remain rural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't actually develop character areas specifically so for this plan. Um, you know, we all still use a traditional land use map. I, I think it's working well for you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we could put in your work program is this idea that you could develop a character area map, which is a little higher level, that could capture some of this more general, you know, exactly what you're driving at, right? We sort of have both in our district, or we in Douglas County have sort of highly urbanized areas, um, along with areas that want to stay rural. Um, character area maps tend to be really good, you know, at, at putting that level of nuance and detail in it. And you have an option to write that into your comprehensive plan. Um, so if that's something that you think would work for you, we might put that into the work program as something that once you adopt this, you know, we kind of go back and take some time, you know, to look at what that could be. Um, I know some communities that use both a land use map and a character area map. Some communities have kind of gotten rid of their parcel by parcel land use um, and they go just with character areas. I probably would not recommend that for Douglas County. Um, you know, but I think if you wanted to start to transition more, you know, to this kind of higher level narrative, for what specific areas could look like, that would be a tool that we could write into the work program to kind of help facilitate that as you move through this five-year period into your next comprehensive plan update. Could be a really cool, you know, activity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe this is a, a perfect time for that higher level narrative. Yeah. <coughs> also, okay. just like to say uh, this more comprehensive planning effort has been uh, amazing between the city and the county and the collaboration has been definitely remarkable. Our Board of Commissioners, you have your marching orders regarding what's required. Uh, you had some great points this morning. If we could just respond back to our manager of planning and zoning, Ron Roberts, if he has that information that could help elevate this uh, uh, his planning more. Mm -hmm. okay. And I've had an opportunity to spend time at most of the meetings. They've been very productive, and thank you all for what you've done. You're right. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. All your hard work. All right. Next, we'll move to the approval of the minutes. Um, tomorrow, uh, Board of Commissioners, I just ask that you look at your minutes uh, and uh, we will meet importantly tomorrow to approve. County Administrator, do you have any uh, input? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Uh, we have business items, tab number four, authorization to create a new position with the Information Services Department, title Network and Systems Security Manager. Uh, Bust my eye. That is no one that, that has been. Yeah, that's yeah. been the way some of you I still have an old one. Well, tab number four. Do you have a new one? I so that I can look at a system. Let me just look at that one. Oh, okay. There's one right here. Okay. There's an old one. Tab number four. Authorization to issue an invitation to bid for construction of restroom concession uh, facilities at Bill Arc and Fair Play Parks to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. morning. Uh, the uh, construction documents have been completed and we are asking that uh, you allow it to go to bid for the construction of the new uh, concession stand restaurant at both locations. That's a recommendation from the Recreation Oversight Committee. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Gardner? Just some clarification. Are you saying you've already got the plans laid out for the concession and restaurant? Yes. They've the already... Uh, construction documents are complete. Okay. Uh, so now we're ready to build out for actually the construction. Is there any prefab of anything? Or? No. No? No. Um, okay. So there, in Fair Play, um, I know that they're still playing softball. Is it softball? Softball season to, isn't, yes. Yeah, uh, they, they have a, a program going on right now. <coughs> During the construction of it, how are you going to weigh that? Because are, are you going to uh, demolish the old facility right away? We are. What are they going to well, do in the meantime? Not right away. I mean, I mean uh, whenever it <coughs> starts, how are they going to have a concession stand in restrooms while the construction is? Going? We're going to meet with those folks and find out what their preference is, whether to set up a portable situation or to actually move the program to another association. That'll be up to them, whichever they choose to do. So they'll have an option to either go to Boundary and play there while that's being done, or up to Bull Arc if they would like to. Uh, 
and absorb <coughs> what they have as far as participants or we could set up a temporary we have a temporary restroom already a trailer that can be put there and they could set up a temporary concession stand okay so but you are going to touch base with oh them yes and absolutely make the decision okay. absolutely um i'm not even sure what seasons there is going on now because now we have fall ball like <laughs> so uh, ball. they didn't have that when I, my kids were growing up so there's baseball and softball yes going on yes. and there's no football down there no 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 okay. <clears throat> and frankly probably by the time it's a shortened season in the fall so frankly uh by the time the construction were to start there should be nothing going it, it might run to the spring, but that will depend on weather and the construction schedule, which yeah. we don't have yet. All right. Thank you. I get that. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just along the policy line, um, when people bid on our contracts, um, and specifically one, <coughs> what is our policy um, regarding disclosure? If, in fact, we're related to someone, that's bidding on a contract, or vice versa, is there a disclosure on the other side? Can, can somebody weigh in and explain what that official policy is? And at what point do we disclose that? Uh, on the vendor application that uh, the vendors have to file with the county, we're actually asked them do they have any um, relationship with any other county employees. Okay. So we, we get it on the uh, uh, that vendor application. Okay. So, I mean, it's so more like mother father brother sister closer daughter, yes. son. i mean like that one degree of close separation circle. yes close circle. but not farther out no the second cut and stuff like that okay all right but again yes. as it as it lays well, right. to right. <laughs> <laughs> disclose but again there's a proper timing right it's not an after fact right it, it's when is disclosure necessary for, for example we may not know um, um, who do we write it to? Like, if I'm related to someone, where do I submit that to? Um, I'm asking. Okay, sir. Um, if you're going to be a vendor for the county, then it's we're going to require you to give us that information. Mm -hmm. But if you're just, in general, you're related to somebody and you're a business in the county, we don't have a way for you to send us a letter and saying, I'm in business in Douglas County, and oh, by the way, I'm related to Jennifer Hallman. We don't have a way to do that. It's only after the vendor, after the business actually uh, wants to become a vendor that we're going to know that. Just a business out in the county that's not a vendor of ours, we wouldn't have any knowledge of what relationships they have with other county, with okay. county employees. So, okay, I'm going to rely strictly to the Board of Commissioners because it's about um, conduct. If in fact, but I, I'm aware that somebody's bidding that's related to me, I probably should disclose it as well because I'm making a decision on that contract, right? Yes. If it's a close family relationship, a circle. you should probably recuse yourself from that vote. Mm -hmm. That's my no, opinion. No, you're fine. Bill, so stay there. Conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. Conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, of course, we re refer back to legal to give you the parameters for that, but I. It sounds like it would be a conflict. Okay. I, I just just wanted to clarify. Legal? Oh, Ken's not here. Um, you want to wait? That's not Ken. I'm not that bad in vision. <laughs> can, can you weigh in, please, if you don't mind? Or just I'll be happy to look at it, but I'm sure that the answer is to recuse yourself from the vote. Right. So just recuse in a public comment, but necessarily I don't have to. Or, or, Oh, excuse me, I wouldn't have to write anything to Madam Chair or to the board or uh, what would be like a proper course. I mean, just for the record, it's just it's sufficient just to be a record. <laughs> if we're live on TV, I recuse myself. I think that's sufficient. Okay. There is no legal requirement that you send me a letter or, or send or me somebody somebody on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the board a letter or okay. stating that. Can you find out just the official record, please? Yeah. Madam Chair, you know, okay. okay, thank you. Commissioner Walk here. No, let's get deeper in the weeds here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, made me think, you made me think of something now. In, in the, I understand the original vendor application, sure. they're supposed to list relationships. <clears throat> yes, sir. just make it simple. And so that may have been four years ago on that vendor application. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming around to bidding on a, on a clubhouse or whatever, and they've married somebody, or or their daughter has come to work in the courthouse, 
We have no way of knowing that unless we question them in the bid application. So what I'm saying that I do understand that, that would seem to need to be refreshed, not just an original vendor application that came in 12, 12 years ago, but on the actual uh, broadcast that goes after the vendors. Today we do not ask that question okay. all right, on our bid documents, but we okay. certainly can't add that. Uh, yeah, I would ask the chairman to, to give us legal and, and cover that base. Yeah. <coughs> I yield back. Refresh. <coughs> okay. Uh, and, and Commissioner last, uh, Mitchell. And, and last but not least, I think it's the discussion as well as legal public just by this <coughs> discussion and the vote that you want to recuse yourself from, not just the vote. Mm -hmm. and, and the discussion, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's both. Mm -hmm. So just FYI. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any other questions for Director Dukes? Other than that, I'll move forward. Uh, we'll move to tab number five, authorization to sign a memorandum of understanding between Goodwill of North Georgia and the Douglas County Public Libraries for the purpose of supporting the efforts of Goodwill North Georgia Career Connector and Career Services and enhancing the Douglas County Library System outreach goals for patron services and job search support. Cindy Moore, if you could. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, this agreement has um, collaboration we've been working on for a few months. Um, currently, the Goodwill of North Georgia facility here is just the store. They do not have the career connector, career building um, space they are not looking to expand that at their current location um, most of the C georgia a uh, goodwill of north georgia locations do have a in building career center so in the sake of saving <coughs> goodwill money um, they have approached the libraries in a collaborative effort to us provide <coughs> the location and the computers and they will provide the staffing and the resources to develop an in-library community career center. Um, it's at no cost to the libraries, the county whatsoever. Um, they will be providing um, career connecting employees once or twice a month where patrons, citizens can come in and get free career assistance, um, resume writing, job searching, that sort of thing at no cost. Um, they will also be providing their career connector web link mm -hmm. to all of our public computers and we will be doing that at all three of our libraries. Um, what's so great about the career connector is it gives direct links to local positions, local jobs that are hiring. Um, we're working with a development authority in Breezy Stratton to get that ironed mm -hmm. out. So she reports to them, lets them know what kind of jobs are available in the area. They put that on their career connector and we have a direct link from all of our public computers at the libraries to that resource. That's fantastic. Any uh, questions uh, for Director Moore, uh, Commissioner Moore, or somebody? Yeah, 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 it's your second time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we talking at uh, all library locations or specific library locations? Right now, we're just talking about the Douglas County branch here on Selman Drive. Okay, Selman. Selman Drive. Okay. okay. And has there been any discussion with the Douglas County Development Authority in, in possibly providing uh, space? Yes, we are working with the Development Authority. Um, we want to see how things go with um, once or twice a month at <coughs> the Douglasville <coughs> Libraries to see if this is going to work and if we can expand that with Development Authority at a later time. Okay, thank you. I yield back. Yes. Madam Chair. And this is great. I mean, as is, face value, wonderful. Um, I, I like it. I, I like the collaboration. I, I like the optimization of assets that we can work together. Sounds good. Uh, as a priority for the county, um, is workforce development as important as economic development? Do they coexist? Uh, is one a higher priority versus the other? In other words, one is um, I'm working on the individual's you know, skill set, soft skills, preparing them to perhaps go higher um, to get a job. Economic development obviously has more of the enterprise. In other words, I'm, I'm, I now become a business versus working for a business, and I 
obviously get to expand from there and maybe hire people. Um, and I, I guess it's more of a broader question. Um, are we doing enough in the county to, to expand workforce development? And maybe this is a chamber conversation, so I'm just, I'm, I, I don't want to get over into an area that perhaps the, the private sector shouldn't really be handling, but I'm, and I think this is a good um, collaboration, but I'm just curious. Well, we have aspirations to, uh, where, where people, everybody wants to improve their quality of life, um, but there's a lot of resources that are out there that need to be tapped. I guess the question is, is that a, a priority of the county? And I get, I'm sure I guess I want to to you to say that, that we should look for ways to continue to optimize like that, but, but I'm not trying to put words <coughs> in the commission's mouth, I'm just, I'm asking. It's good that you mentioned that, uh, Vice Chairman Robson. I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Breezy Strat uh, Stratton yesterday. But, uh, she's uh, our Director of Workforce Development, and we are doing quite a few things here in Lawrence <coughs> County. Uh, we are certainly uh, in entertaining apprenticeships with companies such as Medline, ResMed, and all companies along that Riverside Quarter. Uh, she also has another workforce initiative that focuses on adults. Uh, our apprenticeships is primarily for our high school students, but our uh, this workforce uh, improvement uh, for the workforce, that is for our adults. We have something that I'm not able to release right now, looking at construction, uh, potential uh, showing up our uh, talent for uh, construction workers because uh, we have quite a few buildings that are going up here in Douglas County. So we, we kind of looking at a construction rated program that's coming forward down the pike. And also we're focusing <coughs> on our small businesses here. Uh, we have MRSA, who we are engaging with, which is mentioned at our strategic plan unveiling the other day that we'll be working with with our small businesses to get them uh, started. And that's something that I'm very interested in for those small businesses as well. So we've done quite a bit. We just, uh, workforce development has expanded along uh, Club Drive, which uh, we've taken that United Way uh, component, which we, um, Mark and I, met to see if we could extend their services and make it wider. Uh, I'm looking at Department of Labor coming in, uh, hopefully, uh, twice a month. That would be something that uh, we have not had here. Uh, we don't have a lot of people that are unemployed. Usually when you have the Department of Labor here, they're on employed, but our, we got, but our workforce is, I mean, we're moving. Uh, the jobs are plentiful, and uh, the only thing that we're having problems with, when I spoke to Breezy yesterday, is having enough people to fill these jobs that we have there. <coughs> That's one of our concerns. But we're moving. I hope I answered your question. Yes, Madam Chair. We're, we're good. Thank you. Okay. My yield totally. Okay. Commissioner uh, Yeager. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to ask if you talked with the labor unions, because oftentimes Carpenter, it was a, a big labor you know, Carpenter union here in Douglas County, mm -hmm. and they want to <coughs> teach people how to be a carpenter, how to paint sheetrock, mud sheetrock, and stuff like that. So uh, have they included the labor unions? I can follow up with Breezy, but what I'll do for our next board of commissioners meeting, I'll just ask Breezy to up there. I didn't see you. The answer yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see you. Um, I don't know if our economic development of those directors here. If you could come up and just answer a few questions for us. I didn't see you. Okay. Please. Great timing. <laughs> Yeah, no, no problem at all. Uh, but you, you, you stated a lot of what what is going on. Um, and to your your question, uh, Commissioner Robinson, um, economic development and workforce development, you, you can't separate the two. Um, with without without the workforce development, you don't have successful economic development. And so, um, we've dedicated Breezy's role is solely focused on supporting our existing businesses and where the lion's share of that support, it lies in workforce development. So um, what we laid out in our strategic plan um, with our pillars of cultivating talent, it's looking at it from K through 12, looking at it, the, the higher education and also um, a, adult uh, upskilling as well. So those, those individuals who may not have gone to college or are trying to get back into the workforce, finding all those opportunities but really it's a partnership. So it's not done out of one office, um, not done out of one person. Um, this, this is a prime example of, of how this works, making the connections of resources uh, together. And so we actually got the idea for the Cab County and how they use their libraries and, and looked at this opportunity and working with Goodwill 
and, and making the connections there. And so we're, we're that's kind of what we do. We, we connect the dots um, as much as possible. And so this was just another example of that. Chris, could you speak more a little bit more about the, um, the MRSA initiative, about what we're doing for the small businesses? Yeah, so the, the MRSA initiative is a program called Co-Starters, which will launch on October 1st. Um, that program is uh, being sponsored by uh, the Chamber, uh, Douglas Unite, uh, BB&T, um, and we're, we're talking to some other potential sponsors of that program. It basically will be a nine-week <coughs> cohort for entrepreneurs uh, to go through that program, and when they graduate from that program, there'll be somewhat of a pitch competition um, with some level of a prize at the end of that. Um, but we'll, we're starting to build on that, you know, so those who you know, don't want to go work for a company but start their own business, giving them the tools to be successful in business and then start uh, doing seminars in the spring where we see some of the needs are um, amongst our entrepreneurs and then look to do another program of co-starters uh, next fall. So it'll be a continual um, um, output of at least uh, <coughs> 16 entrepreneurs every year that we are upskilling um, to be successful in business. Okay, any questions, uh, Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, I mean, to, to that point, two quick questions. Um, that program will go live on October 1st, so there's more information regarding that. Um, yeah, so um, I believe I believe Sarah sent the release Monday or Tuesday of this week. I'm not certain. Right. Um, but I believe the, I know the release went out Sunday this week. Um, just kind of announcing it, and then yeah. I'll be doing more marketing of it. All right, fine. I've got, we, we, in other words, there is formal information out there regarding this. Mm -hmm. This is something mm -hmm. we'll right. The last question is that, again, back to workforce development, um, this whole economic enterprise development. So, I, again, I get the T-shirt companies. People want to pitch business ideas, right? We want to sort of kind of incubate them. But if you think about the Atlanta Business Chronicle and really gazelle companies, people who can scale, um, a lot of times small businesses are – you know, they're small, they're less than five people, right? You, know, you think about the taxability of them and stuff and their contribution, right? We, we, we get the benefit of being a small business, you can do write-offs and so forth, right? So let's, so, but how do you get them to the point, right, that they make the business chronicle, right? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we pushing, <coughs> so there's what you do, the switches. Mm -hmm. Then there's the business idea where, you know, the t-shirt company, that, okay, let's get a business plan, let's get a little storefront, and there's everybody in between, right? And then mm -hmm. there's the scale. Are we, those are, who's targeting the middle? And the reason I say that, if I look at your sectors, I look at my district, a lot of, a lot of truck traffic, right? So we do the diesels and people come along and they fill up the gas tank and they leave. But who's sitting up there, who, who recognizes that we are so, um, uh, as relates to Amazon and all these guys that are moving um, commerce, that we're lacking truck, these <coughs> lanes. I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a disparity. Who's nurturing those people how to now, just because I'm a truck driver and I'm going across town, won't you own additional lines, additional fleet? Who, who's expanding? Who's having the thought leadership of those guys? Say, look guys, there's so much capacity out here that's unfulfilled. Who's thinking to that? Because again, they're coming into our county. It's great that we're getting the gas tax, but I mean, what about the people that, that actually live here to drive trucks? Can you speak to just in general that? Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, who should be Looking at so those we, opportunities to, like, it's, it's about farming. You're a hunter. You go out and get the next dinosaur, you bring it in. You go out and get the next dinosaur, you bring it in. But who's actually, you know, um, expanding what we already have, right? How do so, you optimize currently what's on the table? Yeah, so we, we put together a, a small group of entrepreneurs kind of in cohort with Mercer <coughs> to look at, you know, what are the other things we need to be doing. So right. with the co-starters, um, idea as I mentioned the the pitch competition at the end is really kind of getting towards what you were talking about and looking at the scalability um, of, of some of these companies so we're starting this first cohort out with just being open to anyone because we don't want to be so restrictive on the front end we may not get enough applicants and so we just kind of want to see what the flavor is first um, and then kind of go through that effort and look at all right all right, we do see some opportunity for some companies with some high, so with some scalability that now, all right, let's put them in this bracket, and then there's there's another effort that through Mercer that we can work with on kind of fellowship programs 
and things like that, but also looking at some of the other tools like examples like Y Combinator, which is a basically a group that brings businesses in, incubates them, and also provides some type of angel investing and, and then you know taking them up to the next Series A investing and things like that. So we're just kind of starting where we are right now. Um, but but mind you, that is that is a part of the, the focus uh, of that. We need to bring this up when Commissioner Mitchell. Um, he's not here, but he. Oh no, he is. There he is. You look. <laughs> we, we had. <laughs> um, we, we've had this conversation. This is pre you, Chris. We we had a conversation of incubators. I think right when uh, this team, class of ten, came in, and it, I guess we weren't ready for that. So here we are. Fast forward. Now we're at a place where we can actually have the conversation of real incubator. We went to switch in Vegas, right? The whole. <coughs> again, you get it. Um, ATDC. There's. There's a space here, I think, that we, we could really, uh, with the nexus of eight data centers, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity here that other peripheral counties like Rockdale and Henry, they're not us, um, Cherokee. I mean, we, we, we're very, we've got a special opportunity. All I'm doing is just pushing the, the mindset, I'm like, okay, guys, we got a lot here. We're blessed. It's just a matter of us thinking through, sort of not leaving stuff on the table. So I'll leave it at that. I, I won't belabor it, Madam Chair, but you get the point, Chris? Yes, sir. Got it. Are you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mokia. Real, uh, real, okay. real quick, we're talking about different, uh, different con contingencies. Uh, the, uh, I had a brief conversation with Chris Collier, who is, yeah. it, it appears that the uh, West Georgia Builders Association is, is uh, re emerging, mm -hmm. uh, kind of from the uh, economic doldrums. Uh, have you uh, had any conversations with him? And I'll just kind of leave it there. You don't have yeah. to go into detail. But. Yeah, part of the discussion, part of what Madam Chair mentioned about the, the the, the tools, the construction tools programs and things like that. Yeah. That started with a conversation with Chris and some of the home builders earlier this year. Okay. And, right. and also with the trade with the union as well. Okay. Just want to be sure. I yield back. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you. We'll move on to the next tab, tab number six, authorization to approve the basic graphic design and color palette for the Connect Douglas, uh, Director Watson. Good morning, Good morning. everyone. Back on April the 18th, 2017, the Board of Commissioners officially accepted Connect Douglas as the uh, phrase trademark for all of our mobility programs uh, current in, in the future. Today, we're asking you to accept the basic graphic design and color palette for Connect Douglas. And this is what we have. This was first presented to you about a month ago in the large summary package uh, submitted by the co collaborative firm after they completed their phase one work. A um, couple of things to say about this particular uh, item. This, there will be, moving forward, there will be a number of versions of this. Uh, they'll be larger, smaller, horizontal, vertical. It will depend to some degree on what we're using it uh, for, what we're, where we're using it, and what we're putting it on. Um, uh, a second thing is that at Commissioner Mulcair's request, we're going for this particular graphic, we're going to make the Douglas the same size type as the Connect. We think that's a good idea and, and we will certainly incorporate that. So basically that's what we're asking of you today is to accept the, the basic graphics uh, and the color palette for Connect Douglas. Okay, any questions from the board or comments? I like the colors. Okay, thank you. Um, you have one more, Director Tap number seven, authorization to approve a contract with a collaborative firm in the amount not to exceed $50,000 for phase two branding and public outreach <coughs> efforts for Connect Douglas for the remainder of 2018 as recommended by the Transportation Committee. Uh, Director Watson again. Yes, ma'am. Just recently, the collaborative firm finished a comprehensive three-month project for us that involved uh, rebranding our mobility uh, services again current and future uh, they did a lot of public outreach for us um, talking again talking about our existing services now um, we felt that was important because we determined that so many people in douglas county didn't know what we were doing so we felt like we made some progress in that area 
uh, the collaborative firm also uh, did a, a real good job of outreach for us as we went out into the community talking about the proposed express, uh, not the express bus service, the fixed route uh, bus service. Got a lot of good input from the public during those meetings. Um, and of course, they've also, also helped us with, with some graphics and promotional uh, items. Uh, as we move forward now, we're at the point, uh, the vote was made to go forward with the bus service. <coughs> uh, there's a lot we have to do related to that. Uh, there's going to be public hearings that we need to have ab about the CMAC grant. Uh, we want to have community meetings, again, going out uh, into the public and let, letting them know more specifics about the bus service, service the routes. We want their input on where they would like to see the stops along those certain routes. Um, we've got to do things like improve our, our marketing. We'll be working on uh, uh, social media a lot, getting together uh, ads and promotions to go out into the local media and um, also making a lot of public appearances at events like September Saturday. And so that's that. That in general is the scope of work that we'll be asking the collaborative firm to do. Uh, Michael Hightower of the collaborative firm uh, is here today. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll ask him to come up and say a few words. And if you have any additional questions for for me or him, we'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hightower. Good morning, Madam Chair. And uh, my mama taught me a long time ago when it's when it's said good enough, don't say much else. So I think Mr. Watson said it good enough, and. Also, in addition to, uh, I think uh, Danielle has been involved with this as well, uh, Commissioner, uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to blank on your name, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, we have a new person that's going to join. She lives in, she just moved to your district. Yeah. And her name happens to be Danielle. So you have two Danielle's working on this project, so she moved to your district in the past. So you may see two Danielle's working, and she will be assisting as well. So she moved to Douglas County, and we believe in trying to encourage folk uh, local folk where they work. So uh, I think Gary mentioned it all. I think uh, it's pretty clear cut. I went with the the transportation committee with the with the, the with the commissioners and the county administrator. We presented them the other week, and we are pretty clear on those directives. So uh, I'd be happy to answer questions. Okay. Any questions from the board of commissioners? Commissioner Robinson. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just um, just to, to, to Director Watson's point, um, <coughs> this is a continuation phase two. Um, um, we were pleased with the body of work that was provided uh, by the collaborative firm, and now we're just sort of extending this. So from a time frame, it's picking up from now to the end of the year, correct? Correct. Um, and, and, and just like we um, awarded a contract to have a third party operator, I'm, I'm sort of terming this a third party communicator. Uh, one of the things that we learned during this whole process is just the need to um, continue to communicate and make that a, 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 a fundamental fabric of how we work going forward. Um, and, and so while we're communicating, one of the things that, and, and, and Gary, you mentioned it, where will we put all our artifacts, <coughs> right? One of the things that I think we learned during this whole process is people had to find information. They had to go searching for stuff. That, I mean, our, 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 our county clerk is, is available for people, but gee, a lot of this stuff should just be easily accessible, one-stop shop. Um, no offense to my county clerk, but I think she gets my point. Can you speak to that? Like, how are we handling that? Because this is important. Is this part of the strategy? In other words, there was a web, there was a web presence that we were asking for. How are you solving that? Are we coming up with a whole web design like athens Clark County, or uh, can somebody speak to that? And, well, the thing that we're doing first is that we're working with uh, Rick Martin in the county's uh, communication department to, to provide a, a web page that will be a one-stop shop where you can go to that particular page and get the information that you need about transportation okay. services. I, those are services. Now, I, this is important. There's services and then there's this project. They, they got to run parallel, and I get it. I get what you're rebranding. I get the whole <coughs> connect, uh, connect Douglas, but I can't lose sight of the fact that people want to get up on how we're going to onboard a new um, bus system. 
right? I mean, while we can, I mean, people want to go and get schedules for the current Greta and the current voucher program and all the other four basic services that we're offering, um, part of what he's also, I mean, what, what we're communicating is how this thing is rolling out. So I just, I want to make a note of that. Just, uh, we're acknowledging that there will be a web page where somebody can go one-stop shop and get everything transportation-wide, right? Yes. So we'll keep it there, make it simple. My second point is, um, as we go along with this process, and then I'm gonna pick up the Madam Guider request um, at the beginning, at the end of, of phase one, which is that there's still the need to engage the public. And right. I think you mentioned with bus services. And so, um, as part of the Transportation Committee, please confirm publicly that there's an acknowledgement that there will be another round of going back out into the various four commission districts dedicated. You know, let's stay away from Citizens Hall if you can, nothing wrong with that, Commissioner Mitchell, but you know, push out into the community and get people's input, uh, specifically rotting them. Absolutely. Right? Yes, sir. We also agreed to have, we know by law or a federal requirement per se, uh, we have to have two public hearings. One in the morning and one in the evening. I think, you know, typical lineup with our meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know we agreed to do that, but I think Commissioner Molker asked for perhaps even um, additional data, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. For the public record, I just want to know that just like we, we learned, I think we learned some things that we, we, we did good. We want to continue that. So I think the public engagement, just like we just heard earlier with the comprehensive training <coughs> plan, there will be opportunities for people to still give feedback. Um, along the way to participate in this program, is that correct? Correct. Last thing is, is that, but as we move along, and this is something that, you know, I, I've weighed in on, is we're communicating meetings, but how are we communicating progress? Who, where's my timeline? How, how do we set expectations? Because again, you, you'll hear more about this later, not today, but I think it's important that we lay out, who, who's the project manager on this? I mean. I get you, but you got the whole system to manage. Who's going to be that person that tells me, here's my timeline, here's my issues, here's my risk. How are we going to deal with that issue? You knew I was going to bring this up, but how do we deal with that? Well, we had a lengthy meeting Tuesday uh, with uh, Commute Solutions, our, our third party provider. <coughs> and within the next two weeks, they're going to provide us with a detailed timeline of what we need to do to have the buses up and running okay. by the the end of the first quarter of 2019. Okay. A true implementation schedule. Correct. Something that we can be held accountable to. Thus, thus the commissioners, thus, thus you guys, right? Right. Um, it's just not like, okay, so like my street lights, oh, it's coming, it should be on, it should be on, it should be on. You, you literally, we're gonna have something that we, I mean, you know where we're going. I mean, it's too, it's too important and we've got to set expectations and I think this is one where we're really gonna be held accountable for. I just don't want to give it any room. So it's sort of the fundamentals. But what I'm hearing then is that this person, in addition to being an operator who's busy getting the system in place, he's going to be responsible for coordinating broad countywide stuff like marketing and, 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 and advertisement, like we just talked about, and website. Like, how are you going to let I mean, I'm just curious why would it seems like that's beyond his scope? Now, well, he's going to give us a timeline, but who's going to yeah, manage? He, well, he. He, he will obviously be giving us a, a timeline for that. on operational yes. issues. Yes. The, the other things like the, the mark, marketing, staffing, and things like that, uh -huh. the, those timelines, deadlines, uh, basically will come from me. All right, so you're going to have a single project thread. And I'm just looking for my one pager. You know where I'm going. And, and, I, and I was hoping maybe. Um, again, a collaborative firm, while they, I know that they're doing our third party communicate, they also do planning. Uh, I didn't know if this was part of the scope of work. I know there were some other ancillary services miscellaneous, but I don't. And I also know that you're looking for a transition, uh, what do you call it, a transit manager. Correct. I, I'm just, you, you got to put it all together now. I, I just need to know we've got a consultant, we've got third party operator, we've got you, we've got, we've got this manager. Who's the person that's going to be on the hook? that at any given time, any five of us can call this person and know singly where things are. Well, certainly Mr. Hightower and his staff will be of, of invaluable assistance to me. Okay. But again, Commissioner, as we talked about in the Transportation Committee meeting <clears throat> last week, uh, with the structure as we have it now, the items that you're asking for will have to come from me. There's nobody else to do it. I won't press it, Commissioner Moker. You know, I just want to lay it down there. Okay. If we needed help, we can, but your capacity has to be there. That's all. And so 
I was willing to, to help advocate for that, but duly noted. And so we'll, we'll yield it at that. Madam Chair, I'll yield. Okay. Uh, Director, uh, if you could speak a, a little bit about the transit manager responsibilities and duties. Sure. As a <laughs> the, the, the transit services coordinator that we're currently advertising for, transit services. his main function will be the our day-to-day -day liaison with the third party operator. Uh, if, if there are any type of operational issues, on time issues, it will be this individual's responsibility to work with the third party to, to get those straightened out. Mm -hmm. um, he'll also be doing things like uh, working on agreements, memorandums of understanding with <coughs> places like the mall and Walmart uh, where we'll be making stop and picking up stops and picking up passengers. He'll he he'll be working on those agreements. He'll make be making sure that uh, at our pickup locations we're not trashing them or, or leaving them in a uh, an, an improper manner. Uh, checking on all things like that, and he uh, he will also be heavily involved in in reporting. Uh, Federal Transit Administration data that's required of us. Okay, let me ask my question. Uh, Commissioner Guide, I believe you have some hands. Yes, thank uh, you. I guess I was uh, kind of in the dark. Uh, I didn't know there was going to be a phase two. There was a phase one for 50,000, now there's a phase two. Is there a phase three? As of right now, there's not. Okay. Um, now, part of the job now. For the collaborative firm is to go out into the community um, you said in each district um, now in my district the the buses don't even come but maybe a quarter of a mile into my district and of course the mall is you know you'll be dealing with the mall uh, and it's only going to address some apartments in my district so I guess you'd have to be talking to those apartment people, uh, owners, as to pick up there. But uh, it would be a waste of time to have a town hall out at Dog River, I can assure you. <laughs> because the people, they don't have the service. Uh, same way with uh, Mirror Lake, they don't have service. So it seems to me like instead of, uh, you might combine my small portion with the uh, Commissioner Mitchell's because uh, very few people in my district have been affected by this. And I assure you that they're not going to come to mm -hmm. another town hall meeting for something that doesn't even service them. But I can't, I can't um, be remiss by not bringing up the fact that that last report by the collaborative firm was not what it should have been, it should not have been published with names, addresses, and phone numbers out there on the website. I hope that never happens again. Uh, I don't know if there's, if someone could sue us over that. But uh, people are going to be reluctant to sign a sign-in sheet at a town hall if it's going to be put out there with their addresses and their phone numbers. So please make sure that never happens again. But, um, the, and I, I think in Commissioner Mulcair's district, it just goes a quarter of a mile into your district. So most of your district's not gonna be affected uh, as far as the people. It goes into the business area, but not the people where the people are. Well, as far as, as where the meetings are and how many we have, we'll take the commission's directions on that. If, if you want us to have one, two, or three meetings in your district, we'll be glad to do that. If you don't want us to have any, we'll be glad to do that. If you want to combine uh, well, the district one and district two. Well, firm to determine that. Uh, well, uh, that would be more of a commission decision, I think. The, the collaborative firm, like me, works at your direction, and we'll do what you tell us to do. Well, I yield back. Okay. I appreciate the yeah, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but... Uh, I, I'm, I want to have the community meeting even though the, uh, the system uh, barely impinges on my district because I, I'm, I'm not making the assumption 
that uh, a few people, some people, I don't know how many, may avail themselves of a system to avoid uh, Douglasville traffic and, and right. actually drive and get on the get on the transit system, get on the bus, either to Cobb County or or the, or, or the core of Douglasville. So that that remains an option for people who may not uh, use the use the bus system on a daily basis, or maybe they will get into work at the hospital. And, you know, I, I just don't know. So right. I'm not going to presume that uh, uh, third district uh, people do not want it. Another town hall meeting, and if they, if they don't show up, then that'll be their call. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner, you're welcome. I mean, I'm sorry, Robinson. Yes, uh, I, I think with, with about, to the overall point, I think the spirit was about transparency and communication, and you you have the option, right? The, the whole point <coughs> is you can either self-select it to participate, or you can choose not to. But we want to be important that. No, we want to make sure, at least in the committee, we wanted to make sure that it was available, right? So, um, clap to firm, and, and as, as Director Watson says, yeah, they'll do whatever the pleasure of the board is, but we also know that each one of us are individually elected, and we each have to be accountable to our, our, uh, our citizenry. And so, uh, and everybody's distinct, and everybody doesn't have a homogenous uh, one way in their own district. I mean, there's a lot of different needs. So. There, there's a, I won't say, it's a pseudo-sovereignness. I mean, we're not a state, we're not the feds, but there's a pseudo-ness that says, okay, well, you still make the call. There's still a home rule within each of our districts, and I think we just want to be sensitive to our peers' opinion. Your voices matter, so whether we choose to, to get involved or not, I get it, but from a committee, it was important, and you guys understand, like, no, we're going to communicate, and we're going to be available, so we won't have a situation where we don't know we're in the dark. It's like, well, we, we made it available, so that's important. I want to know, and Gary, make sure we publish. Um, um, Mr. Hightower, make sure you amplify your communication role. Like, well, here's, it's available. You can choose to vote or not vote. You can choose to show up or not show up. That's your call, that's your right. But I want to make sure that the administration is not in a place where um, they're being questioned about um, access. Uh, and that, and that um, is important, I yield. Okay. Commissioner yes. Mitchell. And again, I agree with the spirit of it. The spirit of this is really just to, to communicate and, and, and educate the general public about what exists, not whether they for or against. I think we've kind of, that train is kind of what I call left the station. Um, my, my first question, though, you talk about the landing page um, or the website, but I think it's called a landing page, which is fine. Which uh, the programming committee has already spoke of, kind of got you in that direction. Um, I'm hoping that this landing page consists of, as Vice Chair stated, not only just uh, the mere fact of the systems, uh, uh, the busing system, but it includes everything, transportation, from understanding that was the correct. So if it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's inclusive of all the transportation, great. And to include uh, the information that's, that's needed with routes and everything else that deals with the busing system. So. I'm assuming that you and Mark, you and Rick have worked out the details of kind of what that looks like, what that is, and how it's easy accessible to the general public. Yes, sir. We want to make it absolutely as easy, easily accessible as possible. Right. And and I envision this to be a a, a fluid document. Understood. We we will start with information that, that we think is important, but it's. As we get more into this process right. and, and people give us It'll suggestions, evolve. we'll add things, It'll evolve. Yes. leave out things. That's that. That's good. And and we'll, we'll be also not only just solely rely on the, the, the website or the landing page, but we'll also we'll be creating documents and handouts and so on. Yes. So that's what they're going to help okay. us do. All right. So can, can we also speak to that? Because I want to make sure that, I mean, because I've got a couple of <coughs> folks in my district that don't even know what the website, what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yet alone can communicate via web. So I'm hoping that we at least extend ourselves, like I always just stated earlier, we're gonna over communicate any way possible outside of just the website. And hey, Commissioner, uh, component <coughs> D of the document uh, speaks to that point. I think mm -hmm. it'll be in a variety of ways. And I think it will be uh, obviously everything from, from lid drops to community kiosks yes. to FAQs to uh, the rollout and also Commissioner Gatto, as, as, as uh, Director Watson indicated, we will follow your directions. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the, the critical piece, as Commissioner Pomoka indicated, is just making available to everybody. I think um, 
we've done outreach throughout the region and other parts of the <coughs> Southeast, and we make sure that sometimes a service may not appear to be needed at the time, but you just never know down the road when the need may come. So we'll follow that guidance, and, and you just never know when that service may be needed. And, and, I, and I agree with that. I depend more on the ridership and the delivery of the messaging right. versus who wanted in their district or not. So I'm hoping that, that this is being shared throughout Douglas County, period. Not whether it's District 1 combined or not. I mean, I'll take it all just to make sure. That's why in my last conversation about this, let's, let's communicate what this is, right. more so than whether my district or any other district <laughs> wanted or not. Right. And, and we have, a, and we always feel we have an obligation <coughs> to each district to provide service, uh, right. no matter what happens. So, but again, we'll be guided by your direction. But we have that obligation <coughs> to provide information and service to whoever we, we, we work. Well, if you listen to my direction, do it all. Uh, yes. Uh, the other part of this, when we dealing with the whole operational side of it, uh, of the whole makeup, I'm hoping that that we're as commissioners uh, will get. I, I know I made the request once before. I like to have daily updates, but that being that's an overreach. But at least monthly or quarterly updates of kind of where it is, what it looks like, what, where are we going with this? Um, um, I, I know from Vice Chair Robinson and Chairman of the Transportation Committee, I, I can almost definitely know that if there's a need to make adjustments, which I know there will be, that that will come <coughs> from that committee. And, bring it to the full board, but it would have been already communicated to the general public and everybody else to make sure that when that type of recommendation comes, that it's been well communicated, that it's been, it's out in the community and knowing exactly what that may or may not be. Okay, uh, Mr. Mitchell, I was looking in the item, item C on the bottom, bottom of page three as we, as we work with uh, Mr. Watson, we'll also uh, make sure we have through him a, a monthly report on all communication efforts so that you guys will in. And also, if you have any questions in the interim, we're not just going to say wait till the end of the month. We, we, we're available as we did, uh, even 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 in, in those intermittent uh, uh, time frames. Right. And I just want to make sure that, it, that <coughs> again, back to the over educating the community and over communicating so that everybody is fully aware of what this is and, 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 and the success of where it's going. And even the failures that what may or may not be that we may to have to alter it based on whatever the findings are. No? And, and, and in our staff, we have uh, at least two and maybe almost a third employee who live in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they, they are part of this community. So what, what we also do, as Mr. Watson knows, we also monitor watch activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we may see something. We got we to gotta make sure we go over here. We, we, so we, we have like a little radar about yes. How do we how do we ensure that we, we, we stay tuned and, and support the, the, the efforts that Mr. Watson is doing? Got it. Uh, outside of that, um, <coughs> I think and, and, and New Solution though, the provider that uh, being recommended as the provider. Um, when did we say this would possibly be online? What was that? Was it 20 at the end of 2018 or 2019? Well, I guess well here here's the way that is, is working. <clears throat> Transition Commute Solutions is already on board. Okay. They're, they're working with us now. In fact, they spent a good amount of time earlier this week actually running the routes. Okay. Uh, the way they, they have it, we still have to negotiate a contract with them. But the way that they have structured it is that we're not going to have any upfront cost. We won't they won't charge us until the buses actually start running. Now, the work that they're doing now, they're, they're building in to their, their cost mm -hmm. when the buses actually start okay. running. But, but they're, yeah, they're, they're with us now. Yeah. We're in contact with them every day. Yeah. And, and when is the, 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 the rollout date that you mentioned? What was that time frame? What would that be? At, after discussion okay. with Transition Commute Solutions, we we believe that that our best date, our maximum date, would be around the first of March, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Okay. That's the date I was looking for. I just I just heard it. I just didn't remember kind of what that was. Um, okay. Um, all right. Looking forward to it. Uh, again, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Robinson. Yeah. I mean, this is important. I know you want to keep your agenda moving, so I'll be quick. Yep. Real quick. I just heard this contact is due twelve thirty one. They're our third-party communicator. 
yet I just heard the timeline, used, and I know it's a timeline, it's a framing, and I know you just had your meetings, and this is after our committee meeting, but I just heard you say that, what you say, 331? 3-1? Three, one? Three, Doesn't one. matter. Take your pick. Mm -hmm. The point is, they're going to be three months into communication and doing all of this, and then they're going to go away, but yet the time we really need them when this thing is ramping up, mm -hmm. they're not going to be around. So I question whether or not, I, I just, you know, she said phase three, and Madam Guider, it just, and that wasn't my intent, but uh, this was in, in the moment, but it's like, there needs to be perhaps um, some language in here that acknowledges that they may need to go beyond the hard date of 1231. There's a scope of work. It's about the scope of work, mm -hmm. not about the date. I've said that the last scope. It's, it's their time frame that says, okay, we need them to be communicating that, um, again, Commissioner, to Commissioner Mr. Point, yeah, we're educating the current system is out there, but now it's really, now you're implementing something. You've worked the past three months to get everything lined up. Um, this guy now is getting paid, uh, meaning the third party operator. So. He's now live, but yet we're not communicating to the public because our third party, I mean, how are we going to reconcile the difference <coughs> um, if they're buying ads or they're doing whatever they got to do? You're not buying it three months before we go live. You can, you can tear it. I mean, I'm sure Commissioner Mitchell will help frame all that. I'm not trying to speak to that, but I'm just, I just heard a disconnect. And I'm just, I just only heard it in this meeting, just based on what you just said, based on the meeting you just had. How do you reconcile well, that three months? I mean, and that's a valid question. And, and that's the conversation that Mr. Hightower and I, I will have that, that we, we may have, have to extend their, their timeline a little bit to, to help cover us. <clears throat> and, I, and also, I'm not, I'm not saying that we'll have a, a phase three with them, but, but obviously uh, next year we're going to have to have some continuing marketing efforts. Uh, and, and we will come back to you at a later time uh, with more detail about that. Right. And that was my whole point of reconciling the whole thing, lining up all the parts. You know, this is what I do professionally. That's why I was like, okay, guys, I, I really need that. Um, and it didn't take me long to sort of reconcile this moment. So, duly noted, Madam Chair, is not to change what we're looking at right now. It's not to exceed $50,000 for right now. You guys may come back at a future date recognizing that um, it needs to go beyond 1231. I'll yes, leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, Thank I you appreciate you taking the holistic approach, uh, Director Watson, and also the collaborative firm, mm -hmm. particularly with these districts. Communication is key. Mm -hmm. I live in uh, District uh, 3. Of course, I may want to connect, as uh, Commissioner Mulk here mentioned. So I think just that I, I want all our citizens in Douglas County to have a voice. So thank you. Madam Chair, may I just make one other brief comment uh, yes. on another note. Uh, Mr. Pompey talked about the workforce and goodwill. Um, we are we, we also planning, for, you've spoken at the conference before, so as a, a former chair, Worthen and Commissioner Robinson. We are now planning for the 2019 uh, South Metro Outlook, which, which includes Douglas. And one of the big items is workforce, and, and Chris has spoken before as well. So that we just met, as a matter of fact, yesterday. So talking about the great things you guys are doing in Douglas and, and throughout. So we're going to be having a big issue, a big focus on workforce throughout this whole region. So I look forward to you being involved again. Okay, thank you. I look forward to your attending. Um, tab number eight, uh, authorization to approve an agreement with Energy Solutions Southeast LLC for the E911 generator. Uh, maintenance in the amount of nine hundred and seventy-five dollars, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Whitaker. Good morning, Ma Madam Chair, Board Members. Uh, this um, agreement would cover the backup generator, the E91 Center, and uh, what the agreement would also have in it would be two um, uh, preventive maintenance schedules. One would be a major, one would be a, a minor. The major would be the oil change, all the major components uh, checked. Uh, the minor would be something along that as well, transfer switch checks, make sure connections are good, make sure there's nothing loose, make sure everything's functioning properly. Um, one thing it would also do is it would put us on a 24-hour call with the company, uh, which would reduce the on-call rate during the weekends or holidays, which is which can get up there if you're not on, on a maintenance uh, agreement with the generator company. Um, it would also, um, uh, which is a Generac unit, this is a Generac company, uh, we would have parts in, the, in their inventory that would cover our generator on emergency call out as well. One of the things that I've done is I spoke with James Worthington to make sure that this wouldn't uh, interfere with any of their uh, maintenance schedules as far as building maintenance goes, and he's in agreement with me on this contract that's something we need to, to do for the 9-1 generator. 
And that's basically it, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, any questions from board commissioners? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to tab number nine, authorization to purchase a protective turnout, no, authorization to purchase protective turnout gear from Bennett Fire Protection Piggy uh, back in all the city of Atlanta via for the amount of $2,100 per set up to and including 170 sets, utilizing reimbursement floss bonds from the city of Douglasville upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS uh, Committee. Uh, Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, for our protective equipment. Uh, we are piggybacking off the city of Atlanta's bid. Uh, purchasing is good with this. Uh, it's gonna save us a uh, considerable amount of money and give us some uh, outstanding turnout. <coughs> so, and it has been approved by the Fire and EMS Committee. So previously we had two thirds of this mm -hmm. equipment um, approved by the board commissioners. What we're now requesting is the full um, the full year to all of it. That's an additional 133000 and this money will come, we're proposing that it come out of the uh, SPLOS reimbursements from the cities, and we have a balance of 311000 to date in that account. And there's more to come. Okay. Oh, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, and you need to communicate. So I would just, all right, so it's the city of Atlanta. <coughs> City of Douglasville, Sploss. I'm just trying to follow the money. Uh, it sounds like it's bulk purchasing, allowing us to leverage this to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I haven't heard in this Sploss program yet us working with the city of Douglasville for their contributions. So I'm just, how, how do we get, and I'm okay, I just wanna, I wanna hear how we got there and, and how we will account for <coughs> them contributing money and, and so, please. That's part of the SDS, they're required to submit so whatever we spend on fire EMS, they have to pay their percentage of the population, and we keep that in a separate. We keep it separate from the spot. Got it. All right, I'm there. The districts we good. Jennifer, we good. All right, I'm, I'm fine. Thank okay. You. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Madam Chair, okay. just a quick remark from the commi committee member. As uh, Vice Chairman Robinson has often alluded to, is, is the power of both purchasing. In fact, that this is a, an active uh, city of Atlanta contract, which they've. Uh, because of their size, we've got a very, very good pricing on these turnout suits. And uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a letter from the Douglas County Fire Department or the chairman. Uh, just a letter of appreciation because of uh, being able to piggyback on the contract. Uh, we're, saving, we're saving a good bit of money if, if we can go on our own. Okay, that, that would be simple. Commissioner Dagger. And I, I thought you were Cobb County, did they also piggyback? Uh, yes, ma'am, you're exactly right. Uh, Cobb County Fire also piggybacked off this same contract. Do you know what the turnout gear would have cost if we just Maybe bought it? Uh, in excess of probably three, thirty-three hundred dollars a set. A suit, and so we're buying it for twenty-one hundred. Right. So that is a huge savings. Mm -hmm. so, and we're able to equip. All of the staff. That's great. That's great. Thank you. I yield back. Commissioner Gardner serves as the chairman of the Fire and EMS Committee. And thank you all for uh, you and the committee for taking time to compare pricing, uh, pull some bulk uh, pricing. Now, Chief, I know those turnout suits are heavy. Uh, are we, are we, can you kind of tell me about the new suits now? You know, when I was around, they had a lot of lead in them and asbestos. Can you talk about what's in those suits today? Uh, yes, ma'am. Th these are the, the top of the line. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily lighter weight than, than what we currently use, but the, uh, the abrasion resistance and the heat resistance, uh, all that's better. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it should be uh, create less fatigue for our firefighters as they're doing their job and uh, should last us you know, quite a bit longer than, than what we currently have. Typically, how long do they last? When you say uh, we, we're mandated by NFPA to retire them after 10 years of service regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, but ours are generally lasting uh, in our busier stations probably about five years. Okay. So, And uh, what we also do is we, we provide two sets of gear to our firefighters. So while one is being cleaned, they still have a set they can get into. Uh, that's part of our cancer prevention program. Uh, that we we're involved in so okay. thank you 
Um, any other questions before I move to tab number 10? Tab number 10, authorization to purchase 16 automatic vehicle locators ABL equipment from Island uh, Technology Services in the amount of $30,096, uh, utilizing reimbursement plus funds from the City of Douglasville upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee. Chief Spencer, again. Uh, as you can tell, we were pretty busy in our last Fire and EMS I Committee meeting. <laughs> So, so this this will allow us to put our automa our automatic vehicle locators on our fire trucks, uh, so that when 911 gets ready to dispatch a call, uh, they can look up on the screen and it'll show the closest unit to that call. So just because a station is located here, that truck may be out of that station. So with this automatic vehicle locator, it will also it'll make sure that we always have the closest available unit. To see them. So, is this an interface with the tough books, Chief, or is this the same thing? Is this what, excuse Does me, this ABL interface with the tough books? I'm, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, it has an interface. Uh, interface and okay. once this is installed, it will allow us to pull up uh, different maps and stuff. Oh, great. So, our guys can actually look and see where the closest hydrant is when they're going to a call uh, and get any information that 911 may need to give us, such as, you know, we've had several calls here before and uh, there's a, uh, we've responded to several domestic calls at this particular place, so our guys know that going in. And uh, Commissioner Mulcair, I know that, that we had questions about the actual uh, bottom line cost yeah. because of the shipping cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, so the final number should be 30416 that, that took the uh, where they had charged as taxes. Mm -hmm. It eliminated the taxes, but and but now we've got the shipping cost included. So, yeah. so yeah, we drill down in that committee now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and the funding is proposed from the same camp, mm -hmm. and it's actually not just city of Douglasville; it's the cities. The city it's right. Okay. All right. Um, no questions from the board of commissioners. Okay, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. And, and quick question, so this particular piece of equipment slash software, is it, is it software or is it? Is no, it's it actually hardware. hardware. It's hardware. Okay. There, there is a software component okay. to it mm -hmm. uh, to get it back to 911. Right. Uh, and, but that's already been purchased previously. So, so that, that number has nothing to do with the software? No, sir. Got it, got it. And, and, and what about maintenance and upkeep for that particular piece of uh, hardware? Is, is, is there a number, or are we going to be looking at an additional cost down the road? You know, not not on the hardware end. There will be a, a an annual fee on our software side. Yeah, and what is that? What is that? You know, uh, that is Greg, do you remember? It's uh, I, I, Commissioner. I, I don't I don't know I that off the top that. of my head, uh, but I can get that to you. Okay, that'll be ideal. Kind of just kind of know what that know what that is. Right. I'm assuming we don't have a budget for it. I'm assuming we don't have a budget for the year. Yes, sir. What we did. Right. Okay. Uh, that's it. I'll, I'll go back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, next, we'll move on to the next tab, which is tab number eleven, authorization to award a deal to William Scott Smith in the amount of thirty-two thousand forty-five dollars for the rental of temporary housing during renovation to the fire station number three. Kilroy Lane, located on Kilroy Lane, funded by 2016 SPLOST dollars upon the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the chair to sign all related documents. Chief Spencer again. Yes, ma'am. We are that close to starting uh, our Station 3 renovation. Mm -hmm. Of course, the first thing we have to do is we have to provide temporary housing for our people to live in while we're <coughs> renovating the station. So what we did is we went out to bid for temporary housing. We got three bids. Uh, William Scotsman was the uh, low bid and they actually provided uh, the largest of the uh, units. So it'll, it'll take care of our folks for the next nine months while the renovation's going on. And uh, so we would recommend that to be approved. Okay. Uh, Chief, will the entire fire station be closed down, or it's just a certain portion? I was wondering, you know, because you have like the, the kitchen area, but you have that in this 
Uh, yes, ma'am. The kitchen area will be. Uh, th they'll, this is so uh, totally self-contained. So they'll have showers. They'll have kitchens. They'll have bunk rooms. They'll have a living area. Uh, and they'll have to live there uh, until we get the station renovated. It'll be on the, the uh, station property. Mm -hmm. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem. We know we're just going to see it. It'll hook up to the, the station septic tank, uh, water lines, and all that. Okay. Yeah. I know it would be well worth it. Any uh, questions or comments, uh, Commissioner Mitchell? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So, so this is actually uh, uh, on the same facility, uh, on the same area where. Um, the existing fire station number three is. Yes, sir. And, and it's just, I'm assuming, a trailer or whatever it is mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of on there. And these guys, they won't have the pole to the side down. They'll just have to run outside and jump in. Right, right. Uh, and we've also required that, like <laughs> <laughs> that the uh, construction company that's doing the renovation right. has to make sure that our engine bays where our vehicles are parked right. uh, stay accessible and usable during the entire construction process. <coughs> Because we know we'll hit winter time in the middle of this, and we can't have our fire pumps freezing, right. yeah. our drugs freezing. So, mm -hmm. and they've agreed to that. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you back? Doing a lot of great things. Um, okay. Tab number twelve: authorization to accept change order number two in the amount of eighty thousand dollars, eighty thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars, <throat> and submitted by Motorola Solutions to the eight hundred megahertz radio squash by the Pondy. Recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee uh, and with the approval of TUSA uh, Consultant and uh, Bill Peacock Purchasing Director Scott. Scott, Scott hey, Chief and Spencer. This is a little confusing. Uh, a couple of months ago we came in with change order number one. Change order number one was the amount of money that Motorola Solutions was giving back to the county for some of the changes that we made in our tower design. Mm -hmm. So we were making money then, okay? At the same time, they gave us uh, some cost on what they were going to need to spend to take care of some other issues. Uh, and that was all in the same change order, but it wasn't written where we accepted that in the change order. So what change order number two does is tells us what money we're going to be spending against the money we saved. So does all, is that crystal clear mud now? Yes. Uh, okay. And there's still a net savings, correct? Yes, there is still a net savings of uh, 104.535. Okay. Uh, any questions from the Board of Commissioners last year on the Robson? Yeah, I just, and it, again, like I said, it was a little confusing, and this is, this for example, and, I, and this is where my, my logic line was going. We saved some money on a project with some efforts. And then we as a committee could go in and spend the excess. And then, oops, we got some costs that we didn't anticipate. And now we spent the savings, but yet this unanticipated um, cost, um, it puts us in a awkward place. That's not this scenario, but it's things that it, it's how I process what I'm listening to. And, and which is why I'm like, it, 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 there's a there's a time period, I want to reemphasize this, for the record of be steady in the spend, especially on these larger projects, because I, I, I get it. I get we get savings, we, or we can just move this money over here. And I'm like, yeah, but they ain't finished yet. They haven't delivered yet. Right, we're it, it, you can't be so thirsty for the spin, so you don't anticipate like okay you, we're not absolute. It's not going to just be perfect, and, and it's just this case here we're good, and and so okay I I mean it's not an issue. Just it's an object lesson that just make sure you've got a hedge in there as you, as and again it, you don't have to do anything. I'm just offering up as thoughts for me, um, um to the to the commission that as you guys are working through this because this could have been another play. It could have been another scenario um, where we spent the savings, then the cost came back, and this is the same savings that we got. Anyway, I yield. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell. Agreeing with Vice Chair Robinson, um, but just for clarity, I think I heard this. There is a bottom line savings based on the whole radio 
make up because I, I, I've been kind of following this closely and I think <coughs> there is, but I just want to make sure I heard that correct. Yes, sir. The, the original change order number one, mm -hmm. which is the money we saved by changing some things on the towers mm -hmm. uh, and on the shelters and on the generators, uh, we uh, got a, a credit of $185,172.60. Okay. Okay. Then uh, what this change order does is once we started <coughs> building the system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were unanticipated things that nobody could have seen mm -hmm. going into it mm -hmm. for example we had to move a sprinkler head at the sheriff's office mm -hmm. uh, in order for the for the consoles and the the servers and all for this radio system mm -hmm. to be protected mm -hmm. so that was a twelve thousand two hundred eighty seven dollar cost so that's coming out of that uh, in order for us to use the Fulton County Tower, mm -hmm. right. we had to agree to take right. down a tower. Right, exactly. So sure. that uh, $37,000 is included mm -hmm. in this change order number two. Yeah. And then last but not least uh, in this change order is the, uh, the, the cost for the uh, Indian tribal fees. Uh, of thirty-one thousand mm -hmm. dollars, so all that has to do yeah. with the radio system. Right, right. right. And, and after all that, there is a net savings of one hundred and four thousand, some odd, five hundred and thirty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so yes, to answer your question, there is yeah. a savings. Right, right. So that, that was my main make sure that right. we, we knew that side of it, um, and which I think, and I, I'm not on the committee, but I think we do a good job at monitoring that the savings because. Uh, it was a nice, healthy savings based yes. on where we're going. Um, but you're right for the unforeseen things that we don't know and just happen to happen, like the tower, the one in Fulton County that we end up using, you know, and be a part of. Where we, they said, okay, we'll do this mutual agreement if you do this. Right. Which, and which makes a whole lot of sense based on the mere fact of how long we can kind of hang out on the <coughs> tower, what they're going to actually give us access to. Right. Uh, we have the. Uh, the tower side at our fire station five, Chapel Hill Road, mm -hmm. uh, we poured 90, uh, 99 mm -hmm. cubic yards of concrete two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Uh, they delivered the tower today. Mm -hmm. uh, when when they dug the hole to pour the concrete, uh, that appears to be where when that fire station was built, all the stumps and trash and all was buried. They dumped it all there. So all that had to be dug out. Yes. Good dirt put in. Yes. So those are the unanticipated things mm -hmm. that we, you know, yeah. you, mm -hmm. you never know until you actually disturb the dirt. And yeah. Yeah. So it's good you didn't fall. You, you didn't find a ton of granite. So right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 But, but again, yeah. I mean, I get it. I mean, I just want to, you know, reassure us that the savings is the savings. And again, I think we're we're paying attention to. Uh, the cost of even now doing business is starting to escalate. Yes, so. I, I can assure you we meet every two weeks mm -hmm. uh, with Motorola mm -hmm. uh, and, and we go down the project list of mm -hmm. what's been completed, what's mm -hmm. still to be completed, mm -hmm. where we're at on all the, the different aspects of the project. I understand. So, okay, uh, so. we're, we're keeping a tight, tight rein on that. And, and again, we're still in the savings uh, part of it, so we're still we're, we're in good shape. Yes, sir. Uh, just acknowledging that. Well, again, thank you. I yield back. Whenever we negotiated the contract, we actually have a contingency mm -hmm. of about, it's a little less than $500,000 set aside mm -hmm. for any other thing that mm -hmm. occurs. Uh, in this particular case, it was a savings versus an expense. Mm -hmm. But just remember that we also, based on the negotiations that we did, have a contingency fund to cover all these things. It's not going to come back at some later point and you have to approve more money because we've set aside that. That's, always, that, that's, that's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you so much. We'll move on to tab number 13. Thank you, Chief. Oh, we need uh, the commissioner guy to have something, Chief. And, and I'm going to address the bill. Was there not a savings in the bid itself? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How much was that? Um, well, it started at $22 million, then it came down to about uh, $16.5, right. right. and we finally settled at uh, less than sixteen. So. So we, yeah. We have that savings. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you.
Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, tab number 13, authorization to award a contract to 10-8 fire and safety equipment for the purchase of a new pumper truck for the Douglas County Fire Department for a total cost of $451,699 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOSH funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. We issued a, uh, a bid for a new pumper truck on June the 26th. <laughs> Uh, we received two bids back on the due date, which was August the 3rd. Uh, uh, E1 Fireline submitted a bid. Then 10-8 uh, Fire and Safety actually submitted a bid with two alternatives uh, based on the review of the actual equipment and the timeline for a receipt of the, of the new piece of equipment. We're recommending to the board that uh, we go with the, the least cost of the uh, uh, um, alternatives that were given to us by 10 a for uh, $451,699. Uh, that particular truck uh, will be available to us within 60 days rather than um, 330 days for build to order. So um, we're gonna get the equipment much quicker um, buying something that's uh, already on the line and ready to be delivered within 60 days. Okay, any questions to the board? board? Commissioner Guida. Uh, Bill, we'll have to, will we have to add some equipment to this truck? We'll have to supply the, the uh, truck once it's actually on site. Okay, are we taking it off of an old truck and putting it on? This is, we're going to have to purchase new? Yes, ma'am. This will be new equipment. Uh, what we're trying to do is we buy the trucks. We're, we're trying to buy them totally equipped so that if we do have to put a truck in reserve status, we'll have equipment for that truck. So. That gives us some extra equipment. We, instead of buying brand new equipment for like our training division out at the training complex, we can assign one of the old trucks out there so they can use that truck. You know, so the, uh, this truck was already on their site, on their lot. It's at least on the construction show. line. Yes. If, uh, if it may not be completed, it's on the line being built now. Okay. All right. All right. Are you Commissioner uh, Mitchell, I saw your hand frozen in on this. So, okay, back to the equipment. Is the equipment already contained in there? This will be a ready-to-go uh, truck once again? No, no, no. no. Th okay. This bid is for the truck only. Oh, okay. And then there's, there will probably be another uh, seventy to $90,000 of equipment. Got it. Uh, remember to be, to, to be added to the truck. <coughs> yes. To make it, okay. Yes. Yes. To kind of get it in operation. And, 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 and that would have been with all of these bids. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Got it. So, no, because I'm trying to really figure out <clears throat> what was the offering outside of the lowest bid, and I don't always believe in the lowest bid. Right. You know, I'm more about quality than just the lowest bid. Are, are we getting that? <coughs> yes, sir. We, we feel we are. Okay. Uh, it, it meets the specification that we wrote, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they are willing to make changes to this truck mm -hmm. to meet our specification mm -hmm. at that cost. So, I think we're, we're saving considerable amount of money, okay. Okay. as well as it being the low bid to start with. So. Okay, I, I yield back. Okay, Vice Chairman Martin. Yeah, I mean, you have a comment? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tie this to the previous question, which I'm allowing, and it just go back to this whole notion of saving. I, again, uh, I acknowledge my colleagues, it, it's not a question of that, it's just a rule, right? As long as we're aware so that the public doesn't ask us. Like, in other words, like, no, we're aware, we got it, we, we, we get it, so please, my comments are not, <coughs> Um, in that vein, um, it just makes us a sense though. But it opens the bigger question because I, I, I'm listening to it. I'm glad that um, our fire uh, is getting the equipment and we thank the public for um, allowing us to um, um, apply this. But I, I, I still come back to the sheriff's office being left out, right? I, I still come back to like, you know, it, it just like, well, it, I mean, these trucks are great, great equipment, great, all the, and it, and so it's not an either or, it was a question of both, and I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, so from a policy perspective, which is what we're here for, this is a legislative meeting, not an executive meeting, so I, I get to offer this, which is, okay, if, if, if in fact, and I know the jail was the original, it's, it's okay, the jail was the original 2009, it consumed everything, it was a single item, we came back with this one. I know the rationale behind the scene was like, okay, we didn't put the tower on the jail because it would have been too much. We just, or we delayed. It's okay. All right, so in this one. And so that's, in, in theory, the public safety, which is meaning the sheriff's component. In other words, 
We couldn't get the tower and the jail at the same time. It's okay, I get it. Now I'm looking at it like, okay, the hand is dealt. It's like, okay, well, we got savings. Now it's the public safety's contribution. Well, should not the sheriff get the, the savings of that? And why is it only going back to the fire in EMS? That was their contribution. So if you drop $22 million on something, you save $6 million, should he not get some cars and something in lieu of that as laced equipment? That was his part. I know how we buried this in sort of the category name of fire and EMS, but that was a public safety, a public safety component. The, the Sheriff's Department is getting benefit from that. I'm saying 32 percent. That's fire and EMS and public safety radio. Okay. That's what they're getting is the public safety radio component of that. I'm saying. Yeah, the radio system was specified. And I think we looked in it like into this last year with Ken, and cars were not specified in the splos. I understand. But the radio was. Well, radio system. The radio was. Yes, but right. you have a savings. All right, so you can't get more. So, again, all right, so follow me. There is, there, there is a literal savings, which means there's excess, right? It wasn't specified where the excess would go. It's just the excess from the radio. It only cost us, what do you want to do? Turn it back to the public? Why, why, if that was his contribution, why is it going over to fire? It should either go back to the public or it should be a redefined, but it can't just by arbitrarily go to fire to pick up other like, again, it's like, okay, guys, this is, I'm, I'm just making you think through this, and maybe this is a question, Kip, can we ask our, can you, we, we can double back with Ken when he comes back and, and get this answer, but I, I challenge that. I challenge that it should not be arbitrarily shifted over to another group when, in essence, that was supposed to be his contribution. Either nobody gets a benefit, it goes back to the public, or we some kind of way figure out how to get and it doesn't have to be cars, it's just whatever that commensurate is for him. So it's a communication tool, so maybe he gets more, I don't know, make it up. I, I'm, I'm just saying if, if, if it has to fall in the vein of, of, of communication, then that, that equipment should fall, that call should fall to the sheriff um, that his voice should be said. It just seems like he's been, it's being silenced in that thank you so much, but the savings that you get since we got it cheaper, you, you don't get a benefit from the savings. And that's, I, I just, I'm not comfortable and I challenge um, sort of the, just sort of the, well, who, I'm, I'm making sure that the sheriff's voice is at the table on this one because I'm like, that's a big chunk. And I'm like, well, <coughs> where's the savings going? And we're filling it in with the other guys, which is fine. I have no problem, but should not he get a benefit from that? I get it, Mark, that that was a specific item, but then, okay, if it was specific, then why are you using the savings to go to fire? Right? If it was <coughs> only for public safety. And if it would follow me, if it, if it was just for the tower, and it was a, a specified line item, then the savings can't arbitrarily just go back over to the fire in EMS if it was only for the tower. It was a special <coughs> word. So again, that should come what, Jennifer, how does it work? Does it come back just to the general fund when we have savings, and then we can make it come back out that way? Somebody explain to me so how that works. Technically, and believe you me, we would love to be able to purchase Sheriff Deputy's cars with or whatever. Uh, Humvee. I don't care. I'm making it up. Yeah, yeah. So when we looked at it last year, what what was voted on was by the voters <coughs> was 32 percent went toward uh, public safety radio system and fire and EMS. Yes. It wasn't that you know 16 and a half million was going towards this and the other 15 and a half was going toward fire and EMS. It was 32 percent was going to these two items. Right. And the only thing that was listed was fire and EMS and the public radio system. I understand. So theoretically, yes, there's possibly a savings on the radio system based on the cost estimate, but those were just very broad. I mean, so there wasn't it wasn't specified that sixteen and a half million goes toward the public radio system. So now we're coming in at say fifteen or fifteen and a half. So technically, I mean, there's not a savings. I mean, there's a theoretically there's a savings, but the voters didn't say, okay, we're going to spend $16.5 million on radio system. It was 32% for fire and EMS and a public radio system. Yeah. I understand. But if you have a savings, mm -hmm. it didn't cost you that much. So, so again, I'm, I'm hearing a contradiction. Because on the one hand, well, yeah, they did say percentage. <coughs> and all of this great job of negotiations by our purchasing director, there's these savings. You didn't just stop me. So actually, you're spending, you're spending, you're spending. And you know we're going to get to pay. Let's not belabor it now. 
I want a formal legal opinion on what do I do with the excess on that one line item. That's all I want to know. And if there's an opportunity to, to parlay to at least uh, to another flavor of, of public safety communication, maybe it's better radials, maybe make it make it conform to better electronic equipment within his cars. I mean, make it stand in the communications space. I'm okay with that. Maybe you can't spin it to cars, but maybe the equipment. I just think that his, I just need a, his voice needs to be represented here. And I'm just hearing this default. It just ships over here. Uh, then it should stay within that, uh, it said fire, EMS, and tower. Well, let it stay in the tower space. And if he got the primary benefit of that, then let's repurpose that money from the savings within that tower, whatever that means for the whole system of tower. That's all, Madam Chair. Just, that's it. Can you do that, please? Mark? Yes, when sir. When comes back? Yeah, we'll talk yeah. to him. Yeah. And we, we talked to, talk, yeah. this came up last year, and we had the same question, so. I, I just want to. Yeah, we'll give him. Have him write a, a formal legal opinion, meaning he goes and checks the state. I, I just don't want his opinion. <laughs> I, I need a formal legal opinion. Right, yes, sir. Okay. And remember now, public safety covers uh, more than the sheriff department. It covers E911. We have a couple of areas that it covers. So yeah, how do we have those conversations? E911, we have, uh, is it? Uh, but what, the what was specified area. in the splash right. was yeah. public safety right. radio system, right. not <coughs> public safety. Oh, gotcha. I understand. Yeah. Again. So it's specific to the radio. But we'll get a formal legal opinion, okay. written legal opinion from Yes, let me clarify. Get that legal opinion. I'm, get off the, the legal debt, the splos. I'm saying the savings. It's the money part. Right. When you have excess, what do you do in that case? I get what the public said, but now this is a situation where it came in softer. I want a formal legal financial around that part. I get the SPLOS, what we prove, but what happens when you come in under, you've got this excess, where can that excess go? Get that clarified. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, sir. Okay. Commissioner Bulk here, you have a comment? Yeah, going back to reference to dialogue a few minutes ago, it sounds like we're trying to reallocate savings. Well, we definitely talk about holding savings in reserve because we don't know what unforeseen uh, costs are going to spring from the ground. <coughs> so I'm all for getting a legal opinion, but this idea that we've got savings now, we need to give it to the, any department, any other department, is very counter to what the, I think the consensus of this board and what we discussed about 30 minutes ago. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, I see well, you have a uh, look. <laughs> there's an issue in fair play, and that is for a tower also. So yes. just and we're working on that, right? Yeah. Exactly. But maybe some of the savings, that, might could, I don't know, because it is a tower. Now, that, that so tower in Fairplay <coughs> will include uh, the, some of the needs of the sheriff. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that may be an opportunity for the Technically session. not through SPLOS funds. <coughs> but the tower part. Well, the tower is part of the radio system. Yeah, and we had to buy the whole lot. The whole the, lot yeah. Yeah. So that... He may have a point. Yeah, we'll discuss that in a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Mitchell, I believe you have a I just, I'm just. I'm just I, His brain's dead. Yeah, my said. brain's dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, Mark, oh, the clarity, and, and I guess the legal guys will get, get us all together as to what the savings and we'll get savings and what that is. But the category is what was the amount was being spent. Was it 32%? Help me with my man. 32%. 32% was, was that category. It didn't, in that category, break out um, uh, uh, fire units, uh, tower, no. right? So you didn't specify that. So whether there's a savings or not, it's the cost is 32% within that is what we're having to deal with. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I correct in my, you know, so yes, that's I, I don't think there was a breakout <clears throat> there that, was not. that we kind of said 50% would go toward one project and 50%, I'm just using a number. Just that's correct. Project. So I don't think there is. So if there is a savings, whether it's through the tower or buying of the radios or whatever that is, great that we got a savings. But as long as it stays within the category, then we're fine. So if the tower out on that end needed the, that savings and after the project is complete, then I'll say, why wouldn't you use it within that category? Not just it goes to the sheriff based on the savings on the tower, but he needed three more coffers. I don't know. Am I, yeah. 
Am I making it? No, you're correct. And okay. uh, I think legal, that's what legal came up with last year. Okay. And we'll we'll get a formal written opinion. Okay. We so may already have it because I'm, 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 I'm talking about the new. But we'll get a new I'm, I'm concerned about the category versus the savings. Now, the savings are the savings, and I'm glad that there is. But if there wasn't a saving and then we needed more, then the question is out of the two projects, what would have happened then? Yes. Somebody would have fallen short. There's a savings compared to the cost estimate. Okay. You say the cost estimate was, it was originally 10 million, so uh -huh. this was a couple of years ago. Right. Right. So, so I, I mean. Compared to that cost <laughs> estimate, then no, there's no, there's no savings. Right. But that was an old. I understand. I understand. But, I, but, but I think let's make sure we don't get confused that the categories are the categories. Mm -hmm. Not the categories wasn't broken out. Um, I mean, Parks and Rec wasn't broken out until we put the, the various um, priorities. priorities. Yes. And that that's after that, right, the vote. That's exactly right. So now it's broken out to say X, you know, spent in whatever category within the category itself, and that's what it is. Yes, now, if there's a savings because we did something at, at one of the parks and it moved down to the next mm -hmm. category after we're done, then, you know, great. But however, it doesn't mean that we couldn't take more money to complete a project that was on the upper end that may get another have another project <coughs> at the bottom end that get lost. That's right. Okay, so all right. So it's it's the categories versus <laughs> I know it. It's the to me it's the categories and legal will kind of come up with the with the correct numbers and the is not how much we save or how much we spend. Because at the end of the day, we only have 17% in the parks and recs, 32% in um, 32% in, in public, radio, public safety radio system yes. and fire and EMS and 51% right. right. in uh, right. and, and That's right. So that's kind of how I put it in the categories versus the breakouts of what we're trying to say. Is, but I yield back. So I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll figure out from legal as to what that will end up being. Okay. We need to. Okay. Commissioner, I think. Yeah. Finish, we're going back by. All right. Okay. Let's see, I, I, I want to be clear again. District two's question is: I want to an answer on savings. Please do not re-clarify what I just asked for. I only want that. If somebody wants something broader, please. I want the answer on savings. I'm going somewhere with this. In other words, don't tell me what I I can't do. Law sometimes should should come up with a way. What can we do? So I'm, I'm challenging, and, and again, Ken's not here, but he knows my, uh, we have this back and forth. It's like, okay, quit telling me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do. Okay. Find me a path forward on how this, and so just let me, let that be for District 2 only. That's what I'm asking for. It doesn't, it's not on behalf of the full board of commissioners, but I need that answer. Say Second okay. thing is, uh, I'm just gonna close out with, and, and while it wasn't a con to Commissioner Walker's point, it wasn't a conflict of, of position on savings. <coughs> we'll go back to the case in point. It, it, it's not an absolute, right? We don't live in an absolute world. It's all relative. Like for example, in the Transportation Committee, there are savings. S staff comes forward and say, "Hey, we'd like to spend a million dollars." I'm like, "Absolutely not." Okay, and you negotiate it. Like, okay, let's at least give the top three priorities and three hundred thousand. Okay, all right, I'll work with you. It's relative. So I'm a, it's applied. What I'm saying in the broader commission says no. It's like no, you ain't got to spend all of it. And so we apply. We, we're actually living what we're saying. It's not just sort of some conversation. It's like no, let's 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 not. Do, so it's that it's relative. I get it, but again, I'm, I'm, we're all trying to optimize the system, right? We're not trying to be just so linear and dogmatic that we can't think around the curve. It does bend sometimes, and so I, I just want to clarify that. Duly noted, it's not a contradictory. It's just. Uh, we're just we're trying to see it, it, it's all it's about equity versus a, a straight equality across the board one for one it's like oh come on guys i know it's more dimensional than that but uh, duly know that i yield this move i'm fine okay i'm going to move on to tab number 14 let's wrap it up um, um last tab 14 author, uh, authority to enter into contract negotiations with Headley construction uh, corporation for the douglas county ride share facility construction and renovation for a cost not to exceed $1,685,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Pending final legal review, Director Peacock. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We um, issued a um, request for proposal back on June the 19th for the Douglas County Rideshare Facility Construction and Renovation Project. The due date for the uh, bids or proposals was July the 20th. We received five. Um, proposals. Um, we looked at each one um, 
in great detail um, the uh, myself as well as Mr. Gary Watson, Mr. McGill Valentine, um, I think um, James Worthington, uh, and based on our evaluation of the the bids and the experience of the companies that actually submitted, we're recommending that the board allow us to enter into contract negotiations with Headley Construction. We do believe that we can get this price lower. Uh, we need to get it lower based on the funds that we have available. Mm -hmm. So we're asking you to, to allow us to go negotiate a contract to see if we can get this price lower with Headley Construction. We believe they will give us the best product at the end of the day. Okay, any questions from the board or comments from the board of commissioners? Commissioner Guido. Uh, yes, uh, Bill, maybe Gary, this comes out of your FTA grant that you already had. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. And it is now the grant is for what was the amount for the grant? Including the county max, it's in the budget? Million three. So one point three. Now this, <coughs> yeah, this well, contract is over budget. You know, what, we, what we have available uh, with the grant and the approved um, county match is $1,232,686. But we can't negotiate until we award the contract. That's right. Correct. That's right. All right, Luke, not award, we're not awarding the contract today. We're getting the authority, authority to, to go negotiate, negotiate a contract with this firm. Gotcha. So I think that's written. Okay, now let's read the correct. Yeah. So that's how we're doing, so getting authorization to, I know she understood, to negotiate price. So we're going to try to get it down to uh, yes, 1685 down to 1. 3, 1, 3, four, we'll see. Yeah. And go from there. Okay, uh, I know we've, we've got the rendition and everything. Do we ever ask our architects or tell our architects we have a budget? It, we've got to stay within when they draw up the plan. Yes, ma'am. So you told them one point two. I didn't tell them, but they were told. They knew what was in the budget. Two, but it came back as at one point six. And yes, ma'am. We take drew it based on our. Yeah, we we told them what our budget was. The problem that we ran into is the same problem that y'all run into into with splice projects. All the all the bids are coming in over budget. That's happened to us too. Yeah, okay. So this is just an opportunity to go back and renegotiate to see if you bring it down. Yes, okay. Would, be, would the architect be included in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, because there may be some value engineering. Yeah, and there may be some of the parts of design we have to we have to take out of the okay. uh, well, This was a very good mm -hmm. meeting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, before I um, call for um, question for the. Uh, Council regarding our executive session. Any other comments before I commission Can Parks and Rec Committee um, give us an update on, um, it's my understanding that there is um, going to be a, a, a threat regarding the multi-purpose center perhaps coming up soon, uh, and, and, and at least framing a date in which the public uh, can come and view this. Um, I, you know, you usually want to give a couple of weeks out. I know y'all now are in that time frame of getting Public input on the front side, um, Director Deuce or Chairman, um, maybe one of y'all can give an answer on that <coughs> framework. Yeah, so I spoke with David Good yesterday, and he he is here, and I believe David was uh, setting up the schedule to have the public make a quick answer. Just so if we need to uh, announce it to the public, to the public. Yeah, so we, we need to. Um, mm -hmm. Sooner than later, than, hey, the meeting is tomorrow. Come on out. It's like, come on. No, come on. no, no. no. Uh, David Good, um, Communications uh, Director for the 2016 Spots Program. Um, what we're looking at is probably trying to frame around the date of the 18th um, of September. We're looking at that date um, out there at uh, the Aquatic Center. Um, I've sent the email and communicating with, um, with Rick Martin for the communications for the county, and we'll, we'll be talking to him about actually formalizing that date and getting that out um, to the public. And then allow, you know, then talking to the different neighborhoods that's within that, close to that area, as well as the rest of the citizens of Douglas County. Okay, real quick. Mr. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so the 18th of September or October? Um, of September. 
session day? Uh, no, the session day is on the 13th. Okay. <coughs> when is our next session? So we got the 17th and 18th. 17th and 18th, right? Right. Clerk? Yes, yes. that's correct. Yes. I mean, just I want September to 17th and 18th. That's the next session. And we're supposing this. Now, while we're in session here in the Citizens Hall, I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily I would have an objection if, in fact, that was just the date. And well, you know, actually, let me change that around. It's a, I meant the 20th. I'm sorry. Hey, I but but no, okay, so if it's 20th, that, okay, never mind. Then I'll, I'll defer back. I wouldn't have had a problem because, again, it's in a different area. Everybody didn't come to these meetings and stuff. Um, but if it's the 20th, which is a Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, I just want to make sure, Madam Chair, that we can announce it um, at least Tuesday in the official meeting. If that's a date, we need to go ahead and lock it. Okay. That, that was all I wanted to try to do. Mm -hmm. Clerk. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you just have this at, yep. as part of our announcements. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 20, 6 o'clock? Uh, yes, yeah, so 6 to 8 p.m. Bounty Waters Aquatic Center. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll move on. Uh, Attorney Thompson, at this time, do we need to go into the executive uh, session? Yes, ma'am, you're up. Uh, we need to speak about, I'm sorry. <laughs> any court all year old. Of course, it's in the same year old. Sure. <laughs> I'll take a moment. <laughs> Land acquisition and litigation. Okay. <laughs> Board commissions, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Okay. Mr. Jerry, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. I'll see you back in 10 minutes. All right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right.